I think we're live. Hello. Hi, hey. you guys. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm so excited for this. Um, I know we've been talking about like collabing for. Hi, Lulz Cow. How are you? They're first. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks for coming to hang out with us. Um, so I know we've been talking about it for a long time and it's like life like just kept getting in the way. Um, yeah. And I know you're super busy and then, yeah. So I'm, I'm glad we're finally able to do this. And um, I yeah, know, me too. I know there's a couple things um, that I wanted to go over in this stream. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh. The Shani and Rev updates that I just texted you about not that long ago. Yeah. We, we have to go over those, how she changed her description and then the, um, latest community yeah. post and i know there's some videos where um hi wicked witch <laughs> i know What's there's some videos witch? where she attacks you right like she goes after you yeah yeah there's a few of those yeah okay and they're on the playlist right that yeah they're on the okay. playlist yeah Perfect. I and, also, and i have time time stamps for him too for which whichever <laughs> ones we played because you know the whole some of them are long and you don't need to watch the whole thing but that's awesome um, if we don't get to everything like that tonight, anyway, I figured we, you know, we can always like um, do more streams in the future and save some stuff for then if we feel like, um, you know, it's going really long or whatever, because there's a lot of <laughs> yeah. stuff to cover. A lot. Yeah, no, I would love to do more streams together. I think that would be fun. Um, and I'm learning a lot about Shani through you, to be honest. Um, like I, so I guess we'll just start off with the Shani stuff. We're going to do recovery yeah. first. But <laughs> no, I'm fine. Way. We'll do it whatever way. Yeah, whatever um, way we want to. So I don't know that much about her. I remember I was watching Shane Dawson like off and on. Mm -hmm. And I remember she either collabed with him. I can't remember exactly what happened or he shouted her out and sent her makeup, right? Right. Well, uh, she bought makeup. She ordered the makeup. And then I don't know if she just sent a clip the clip into them or what but basically they just used it in the end of the their um video where they released it and there was like a uh, quite a few different youtubers and people mm -hmm. that they featured at the end there so i guess she just kind of got lucky with that but i think that's as far as it went you know what i mean okay it's not yeah. like she was like talking and hanging out with them or anything yeah like so they weren't close they weren't like dming no. um, let me say let's say hi to the chat really fast hetty doll i totally understand if you have to go to sleep i know it's late <laughs> um <laughs> hey phoenix um hi carrie how it's your birthday carrie well, it was yesterday. Now it's not my birthday anymore. Well, <laughs> but, it was yesterday. but I wish you happy birthday. If I didn't, happy birthday, I everybody. Think, no, I think that you did. I think you did. I, I forget. Did. It's been like, I feel like everybody's birthday is this month. Yeah, there mm -hmm. is a lot of March birthdays. I noticed that. But yeah, I turned the big 40. 4 -0. Oh, wow. Well, how do you feel? Like any different or the same? No. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't feel like I'm 40, really. Honestly, I don't. But stuff like that really has never bothered me though like getting older and stuff it's like yeah whatever i don't it, mind it it didn't bother me um oh sorry let me finish this in the chat um you don't know much about the uh, uh, hello you don't know much <laughs> <laughs> about shani and rev either yeah we'll learn together um oh gosh hold on hold on one second you guys my mom yeah. my mom went to this carrie underwood concert tonight and i have her dog so she's oh, called gotcha. yeah Hold on. So will you chat with everybody for just one second? Sure, I'll sure. be back. Um, I don't know if you guys um, are familiar with Lowell's Cow Productions. He's in the chat right now. If you haven't, you should definitely go and check his channel out. Um, he does parodies and he does a spot on Rev impression. I mean, it's so good. He actually made me... Um, a special a video for it was rev wishing me a happy birthday it was so cute thank you again for that lost cop production i love that um let's see we got thank you for the birthday wishes too guys i really appreciate that it was a really great day actually um and um yeah so i'm excited to uh kind of i really don't know shani and rev as much as I think some people think that I do. Um, I'm still fairly new to them myself, really. But <clears throat> mm -hmm. I, uh, okay, you're back. 
<laughs> Sorry, you I'm guys. Just yeah. rambling. No, you're fine. My mom wanted me to go to the concert, but I'm like, I cannot go to Carrie Underwood because she makes me cry. I think she's a beautiful artist. I think she's amazing, but her songs make me cry. Yeah, they are. They can be emotional. You know? <laughs> right? Like the Jesus Take the Wheel, that song destroys yeah. me. So like, yeah. I would rather not. She went with her best friend and had fun, but That's um, awesome. I hope you had an amazing birthday. I heard you said Lowell's cow got uh, made a video for you with yeah. Rev. <laughs> yeah, it was really funny. Like it's basically Rev wishing me a happy birthday. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I want to see it. Do you have it up? I uh, let me grab it. I can grab the link and send it to you on um Twitter. Twitter? Yeah. yeah. Give me yeah, one second, and I'll too. grab that. Lowell's cow, you're three off of eight hundred subs. You guys go check out Lil's Cow's channel. I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. I say everybody's. No, name you're wrong. saying it right. Okay, <laughs> you got it. Um, oh yeah, so the Shani and Rev thing. So I remember I saw that happen around the time like I was watching Shane Dawson. Yeah. And, um, and then I think I remember learning about like she was like this Christian on fire for God. But then I think it turned out she like got into porn, and that was all over Twitter. Not porn, but OnlyFans was it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So I'm sorry I worded it as porn, but only fans. Well, um, I mean, it, it technically, I mean. Whatever she was doing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then I remember seeing that, and then I checked out for a while. I came back, and I think it was around the time, was it Dragna? Is that how you say the name? Dragna? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was he the one who put the house video on his channel? The yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. when I started paying attention more. Yeah. So like, that I don't was know. Awful. It was really yeah, bad. And, the things that like I went back to check on just um like I don't want to talk too much about the kids just because like I feel awful about that yeah. situation like not too much detail or anything right but um like I went down that rabbit hole and it's absolutely like heartbreaking it is it it's, really is and so they sad. take no responsibility for any of it that's the part that's like I think the most frustrating for everybody is like because none of us are perfect we make right. mistakes you know what I mean right. but it's not taking account the accountability or the responsibility and always it's always someone else's fault or or they just twist it and and completely lie just like you know with the with the um, the department of children and families with cps taking the the boys mm -hmm. you know they tr she tries to tell it and their their story is that she's just so sick that she can't take care of them so she willingly gave them to cps and that's just not the way that that kind of thing works. You know what right, I mean? Right. And it was clearly because of, you know, the abuse because she let Rev move back in mm -hmm. um, after getting out of jail. And she knew full well when she did that, that that could lead to her losing her kids. And then that's what exactly what happened. And then, of course, whether rather than like admitting that and trying to, you know, do whatever she has to do to get them back or whatever. She's just turned it into this whole thing where it's all because she's sick. And at this point, I mean, I don't, I don't think that she wants them back. She's not, she's not willing to do anything to try to um, better herself or her life to get them back. You know, yeah. they think, don't have a, go ahead. I think she thinks of them as like, I hate saying this cause it's so mean, but like almost like a burden or an inconvenience and. Oh Yeah. And Maybe. uses them. Yeah, she uses mm -hmm. them. And I feel like she thinks in her head, you know, well, eventually, like, once I decide I'll get better, then I'll get them back. But, like, CPS doesn't wait around for you forever until no. you decide you want to get sober. Like, they give you a timeline and, hey, you have to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Right. You know, a long list. And Yeah. And, and it's know. coming up on, like, um, it was the end of June is when they went. So, you know, it's getting closer and closer to being a year without them. Wow. And I mean, they're not just going to stay in foster care forever. They like if she doesn't do something, they will be permanently placed somewhere and she won't have the opportunity. But, you know, even more than that, they're not little, little young kids. They're teenagers at yeah. this point. And, you know, she's the same age as me. And I have a son that is um, 17. So I I can relate to the age and, and what everything that's going on and it's like you know you only have so much time with your kids before they're grown and mm -hmm. they're gone yeah. and you can't get that time back you know what I mean and yeah. that's where I feel like like I, I don't know if she just doesn't get that or what but it's like her kids need her mm -hmm. and she's been they've been without her for almost a year they didn't they weren't with her on Christmas or any of that yeah. and she's never going to be able to get that time back with them 
um, the more that it goes, the further that it goes to where she's, it's just not going to even be a possibility anymore. And so it's, it's a sad situation. I don't like really talking about the kids that much yeah. either. I feel like she doesn't respect their privacy ever. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, I like to try to respect the fact that they don't necessarily, you know, want to be on there. Even yeah. though she, she'll try to lie and say they do. And like, she's posted, you know, clips before, like audio clips of the older son, like basically praising her and saying how it wasn't her fault that they had to go into foster care and this and that. Like she actually like recorded it. Like it was like a 15 minute long um audio recording of him and she posted that oh. online for everyone to see and um it did get taken down thankfully yeah. um not by her doing i don't think some i think it got taken down because uh they got in trouble for it from the foster family because i i don't think the foster family they didn't ask them permission to to do that and oh that's know, not cool yeah you can't do like you can't they, do that she was just supposed to be talking to him on the phone you know what i mean like just having time with him she already can't see them in person because she's refused to take a drug test mm -hmm. so she doesn't have in-person visitation already and then mm -hmm. when she did that with the audio recording it affected being able to even talk to them on the phone or anything because it's like if they can't trust that she's not going to like sit there and record the conversations and yeah. release them so it's a mess it's Wait, just so does she not even mess. have um she can't have supervised visits i'm sorry you guys we will read the chat hi everybody i see you guys um hello hello thanks for hanging out with us yeah hi everybody um, <laughs> yeah so i guess my question is so does she, can she have supervised visits do you know with them from what i've been told no Oh, that's she is, bad. She can't. She, uh, that's one, bad. Of the, one of the main things that they want them to do is mm -hmm. to take a drug test. A drug test, yeah. And they're not, well, they refuse to do it. And because they refuse to do it, that's one of the things that they, it, but it also goes, I mean, like, until re not if they've been there for a little while now living at the uncle's house but before that they were just living in a motel and so that played into it because you can't just like be having your kids up in a motel and stuff there's no. like you know they have to have a stable place and like environment for them to be in and they're in one now mm -hmm. but there's no um they're not going to be there that long either and they've said that that it's a temporary thing because i guess the house is for sale that they're in so when it if it when someone buys it they gotta go yeah what oh are they gosh. gonna do then you know it's yeah. like they just don't um they never think about the future it's mm -hmm. always just like today what we want for today just like what he posted uh today uh, by the way i sent you that um the, the, the oh, okay. video on twitter the birthday one the birthday one yeah okay and yes. um yeah but uh mm -hmm. Let me yeah, them. so he said he, tr he said today this whole thing about them getting a gig writing uh, for someone or whatever. Oh, yeah. And I don't believe that for a no. second. And it's just he says things like that right when he wants to ask for money. So it'll start like, oh, mm. guess what? We've got this great news and we're going to have a job. So I'm not going to have to ask for money anymore. But let me I got to still ask for money. You know, yeah. one last time. It's like, dude just stop but what's crazy is they get it people uh -huh. you know they are able to pull that off and people actually do come in and save the day every time and mm -hmm. i'm like so maybe you know i'm like maybe we're the dumb ones because why would they stop when they when it works i know doing, you know that's what's sick about it but it works to a degree it yeah. doesn't it doesn't work in actually like being beneficial for their life it just gets them through another day and nine times out of 10 when he's asking for money it's for cigarettes and delta eight delta eight yeah because vapes like if you go to your local smoke shop or whatever like delta eight vapes are like 30 to 35 dollars that's why yeah. he wants 30 specifically mm -hmm. um really fast sarah wished you a happy birthday oh thank you sarah yeah i and appreciate that hunter said just seven bucks folks i know just seven bucks right for tylenol <laughs> sure that's what they wanted it for um i want to relate i don't even know if it's called relate um 
like the Shani and CPS thing, like it's bad if she can't even have supervised visits because they yeah. work with you. Like they work with you and they've seen it all. And I remember, you know, it was a process of me being um, able to have joint custody back of my daughter and stuff. And mm -hmm. like there were relapses and stuff. There was. Yeah. But they gave me, I remember like it was like a year. And if you go over that, there's a chance that like I would have lost my parental rights. But in my times of being a mess, because I did relapse. I had left rehab. I went back to rehab. I did sober living. Like I was a mess, you guys. So it's a really good thing. I wanted to say it's a really good thing. I signed over my, you know, my yeah. life to her dad until I got better because I right. was really bad. Um, that way she's that way you didn't have to worry about foster care. Or exactly. Any of that stuff. Yeah. But so they gave me a year, but I think it went maybe a little tiny bit over, but they really worked with me. Like yeah. It helped that they knew, um, you know, I did the right thing by saying, hey, I'm not a good mom right now. Like, I want to do this until I get better um, or until I get, you know what I mean? Like sober yeah. and everything. Yeah. Um, they really worked with me because even during my periods of relapse, I remember like a worker coming and bringing my daughter to visit me. Should she have done it? I don't know. I wasn't crazy drunk or anything, but like I definitely wouldn't have tested absolutely clean. And she knew that, but there were times too, where they said, just go test. We just want you to be honest with us. And we're not yeah. going to stop you from seeing your daughter. You know, they really worked with me. Right. Yeah. They, they cause they don't want to, you know, break up families. They, they really don't. don't. No. And they've so, given yeah. her a lot of opportunities and stuff too. Cause they've been involved for years with them for mm -hmm. years. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know if you're aware of this, but this is not the first time that Shani's lost custody of them. You know, I heard that and that's wild to me. <laughs> yeah. Oh back, my gosh. back when they were younger. How many times has she lost custody? I think a couple, but I, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I do know that she did lose them another time when she was younger. And um it had like this it's gross, but it had something to do with the living uh conditions of the home and they had came in there and somebody um saw the kids they were playing with her like sex toys. Oh my gosh. Yeah, like vibrators and stuff. And I guess she wasn't watching what they were doing. And uh, I, so somebody reported her. She lost custody of the kids then. And then when she married her um, husband, Chris, the guy that she was with before uh, Revelation with news, before Jason, um, him being in the picture really helped them a lot helped her get them back like if it wasn't for him she mm -hmm. wouldn't have gotten the boys back then so mm -hmm. yeah they they've seen like those poor kids they've seen so much stuff that it's it's really really a sad situation i mean she doesn't think anything about like when all of this chaos and all these mm -hmm. things are going on that they do like the kids were always right there in the middle of it i mean they can hear everything that goes on when they're having these shouting matches and awful different things yeah so and it's you know not what I think about too carrie like they're old enough they go online and they can look up all this stuff about oh them god and... yeah yeah well that's what I, I mean i don't know if you know this either but um one of the older and he actually had to be hospitalized because he was suicidal. No. And it was right after her and um, Rev put the OnlyFans out there. And somebody at the kids' school found out about it. Oh, no. Yeah. And that's why when they moved from Colorado to Pennsylvania, she took them out of school and started homeschooling them. Because, you know, they didn't want to have to worry, I guess, about people finding them on the internet and bullying the boys because of that so their answer was just to homeschool but um yeah it was awful that, that it, it's my heart yeah, it's really bad like the stuff that they have seen and and some of it is stuff that like we've seen like there's footage of it like when when the son was um younger a while back there was she was talking about him in a stream and he didn't you know he didn't want her to be talking and he literally was like crying like don't like quit talking about me i don't want to be on the internet mm -hmm. and like she was just kind of like laughing it off like it was nothing and this last like right when the day that rev and i, I actually sent you um that's on one of the play the playlists that i sent okay. you that there, there's actually um the day that he got out of jail she had been telling them for the whole time that he was locked up which was like about two weeks 
that, you know, she was not going to, he was not going to be coming back there. She was not going to be with him anymore. I mean, she really mm-hmm. like made the kids, they believed that just like what, what she was telling everybody else. We believed it. Like, cause I thought there's no way she would say all this and like talk so badly about him or whatever, just to take him back. Did um, you just hear that video on your channel? Cause I think I just watched it with you. I watched that clip somewhere recently. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I did. Just the other day. Okay, I'm like, I know I saw that clip that you're talking about somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was okay. awful. That's, yeah. That's Where they, so sad. She thinks, yeah, she thinks that she hears one of the kids laughing. And, and yeah. she's like, oh, she's like, oh, he's just laughing. And then the lo- younger one comes in and is like, no, we're both crying. We don't want him coming mm-hmm. back. And it, And she tried to, like, still, even after that, she tried to, you know, play it like, the kid that the kids really did want him back yeah. and it's like dude we heard it with our own ears the way that they feel what are you like we're nobody's gonna believe that but i mean that's all they do is lie so i mean i hate saying this but like maybe she doesn't deserve the kids i, I no. hate saying that maybe she i don't doesn't. think she does i like, don't think she does she she puts herself above them and it's clear that like she really like I mean, just from things like they're not, they have to like, you know, knock on her door and wait if she's filming, she'll be like, hold on filming. And like, it's like, they come second to anything that she's doing. And Mm -hmm. it would be, I don't know. There's just too many things like, like the condition of the home um, being so, so filthy and all that. Then um, this past like winter when they living in Pennsylvania, they didn't have heat. Oh my gosh. So they were literally just had like a couple of space heaters in the house. And one of them was, of course, in Shani and Rev's room. And I mean, when they first moved from Colorado to Pennsylvania, they didn't even bring, they didn't bring mattresses or anything. The boys were sleeping on the floor. Oh my gosh. And G Man actually stepped up and bought them beds. And then that's how they had beds to sleep in finally. But like, I mean, he was pretty much financial, like, he was supporting them for like, over a year where yeah. they would like honestly if it wasn't for him they would have lost custody way earlier than that and he almost was like like he's kind of the reason why they ended up losing uh custody in the sense that he had been talking to cps with them and everything and working with them as well and basically mm-hmm. cps told told them like if he's here if he would be here living whatever day in day out they keep custody of the kids but he couldn't do that. He's okay. like, I just can't, I can't move in here. Like I work, I've got a job. I just yeah. can't, I can't do that. And so then they were like, well, then they can't stay. So I think he mm-hmm. felt pretty bad about that, but what was he, you know, what could he really do? He had, he has to work. Um, yeah. he, you know, he had to get um, back surgery and that's how all of it um, came to be with him, with them having to move out of that place because he just couldn't afford to keep paying the bills there. Like he had been, cause he was not going to be working for a little while recuperating from the surgery. Mm-hmm. And of course, then when they had to be out and move into that motel, that's, you know, when Shani went on this whole thing that he gave her a death sentence by you know, not paying for them to live there anymore. And, that sentence. Yeah, it was oh so over the top. And and it's like, are you kidding? He pay, literally paid your bills for over a year. Like they just expected, I guess, that he was just going to do that forever or something. I don't know. But there's no reason in this world that Rev should not be able to get a job. No reason. She, she technically should too. too but yeah. But she won't. Like she won't. We know she won't leave the couch. So like... I don't know. Rev should at least like have some like dig deep and find some sort of like pride deep down in there and be like, well, maybe I should. <laughs> if I'm going to say I'm married, maybe I should support my family. Right. But no. no. I it's think bizarre. I think his mom and I don't know that much about the situation, but I think his mom really did him a disservice. Mm. And, and, I, and again, I, I don't want to speak terrible about her. I don't know her, but like he's a spoiled brat man child and like right. I, he's so entitled. Yeah. Entitled. Well, that's the thing. He's literally never had a job. Not one. He's never worked in his entire life. And you that's know, wild. yeah. And I just like the way that they were with the money, like knowing that, like, I just, they had so much money. All they had to do was like, be smart about it. And they would have been, fine. but you know, they sold the house to G man for a dog. They didn't want to pay taxes and everything. And at the time, you know, they still had money. So they weren't even thinking about it. 
And they just, like, I mean, the amount of money that they blew through is insane. I mean, we're talking about door dashing, like, several times a day. Jeez. Um, just buying crap that you don't need constantly. And then every time they would move, they would just leave all the stuff and buy new. And then, of course, like, that's why they literally have nothing right now. They have none of the stuff, yeah. all the money that they spent on things and whatever. None of it. They have none of it anymore. They All of it is pretty much gone because they just left it. Yeah. They left <laughs> it. They blew it on drugs, which, you know, drugs are expensive. But I'm going to tell you, DoorDash yeah. is even more expensive. DoorDash yeah. is even more <laughs> It's but, crazy. And even when they get money now, yeah. they'll, they'll door dash stuff. And I'm like, uh, I can't wrap my, like, you barely ever get any money and you're struggling so hardcore mm -hmm. and you're going to door dash something instead of just going, getting it, getting, going to the grocery store, getting enough mm -hmm. to last you for a few days at least for the same amount of money. No, their, their genius idea is they're going to door dash it and get Dunkin' Donuts delivered. And uh, it's just, it's like, Whatever you can depend on, whatever decision yeah. they make is usually going to be the irresponsible one. Yeah. They always make the wrong decisions. Always. Oh my gosh, I have a stupid DoorDash story. The other day, it's not really stupid, but like, I'm just, I'm going to, in case you guys, because I know some, like some people live in cities where there's no DoorDash. Let me, let me explain to you how expensive it is. So my daughter has been going through something and she really wanted a boba. And, um, I don't drive. I could drive. I just don't want to. I don't enjoy driving. I live in LA. I Uber everywhere. But yeah. I also didn't feel like Ubering to go anywhere. And she really wanted this boba. I door dashed a $6.75 boba. And by the time I paid fees and everything else, it was a $23 boba. Yep. Mm -hmm. Never again will I ever use DoorDash after <laughs> that. <laughs> right. It's like, I mean, it's really convenient, but you pay for that convenience. You, know you do. I mean? Yeah. I mean, like. Ugh. Sometimes it's worth it. You Sometimes, know what I mean? Yeah. Especially <laughs> if, like, you're going to have to Uber or something anyway. You were yeah. spending that. So, in that case, you know, it makes sense. But. Mm -hmm. It's it's wild. And, like, Foodie, I know, used to spend a ton of money on DoorDash. I think somebody said, like, a couple hundred dollars a day, and I believe it. It'll yeah. make you go broke, you guys. Yeah. Um, do you want to watch that birthday video you sent me? Let me. Yeah, see. we can watch can that. Pull it up. I want to watch that. And then um, let's talk about the dramatic uh, Shani community post. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. So ridiculous. All right, you guys, hold on. Let me pull it up. Wait, don't play yet. Happy. Okay. Um, All right. He, he It does get a little risque at, at points. Is that okay? Oh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> well, we're we're you. doing an early morning stream. It's okay. I figure we're all adults here. We're all, yeah. you know, we can handle it. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Rev Dude's birthday message and music video. I'm kind of excited for this. Can you guys see it? <laughs> I can, can see it. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Oh, that voice. Happy birthday, dear Carrie. Happy birthday to you. Okay, guys. Yep, yep. All right, guys. You know, Carrie, uh, you know, it's uh, it's your birthday. And I thought, you know, I get the phone from Shani for five minutes, you know, and uh, and, 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 and give you a birthday message, you know. I have to I mute myself. That, I can't. Uh, you and Michael, <laughs> Michael, uh, you and Michael have been having troubles lately. You know, you're arguing all the time. And, uh, you know, take it from me, you know, uh, that. Uh, you know, your significant other is always right, you know, and uh, sometimes you have to spice up the relationship, you know, and let your spouse uh, free to do to, you know, to go out and to hook up with other people, you know. So, you know, I, 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 I you know, and, and, and I want to uh, avail myself, <laughs> what? Of you, Carrie, you know, I'm, I'll be free, you know, because I can make women squirt, you know, I, I can, can make them squirt, you know, you've seen that video and, and, yeah, and, yeah, and I'm no. strong, man, I got it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think you'll, you, you would enjoy it, Carrie. No, <laughs> no, um, I would like to go out on the town, you know, uh, you could be my wingman, oh, and, no. uh, you know, we could, uh, you know, go out. And Carrie, tonight, <laughs> or whenever I end up falling asleep this morning, this is what's going to be playing in my head. Yes, <laughs> yes, too. yes. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Sad. 
I never want to hear him say squirt ever. No, I, I know. The ladies, you know, the ladies and uh, <laughs> we go to a nightclub, you know, and um, and, 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 and we go there and we try and pick up the ladies, you know, and uh, that would be great. And you could, you could help me out and you'll give me, you know, you'll just see you way clear, you know, to give me a couple bucks so I can get in and uh, you you could buy, buy a few, few drinks, drinks, you know, just oh, a gosh. few drinks and uh, Lulz, you know, Cubby. Coke, you know. <laughs> Maybe some coke, and we could do that in the bathroom, and we can go out and try and hook up with lots of ladies, you know. And 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 you know, uh, Carrie would be okay, you know, because she can uh, babysit Shanny, and uh, those those two, you know, they'll get along because they're both Christian ladies, you know. And uh, Shanny's uh, always wanted to experiment with uh, another lady, you know, alone. No. So, oh my gosh, run, Carrie, you know, run! Uh, that could be good for both of them. You know, what do you think, Michael? You know, we're going to be friends. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll leave that uh, that with you and uh, we'll see how we go. You know, hey, guys, you know, you know, you know, uh, Michael and Carrie, take it from me. You know, uh, I, me and Shani have uh, been through lots of hard times. And, uh, and, we know. and, you know, we don't always. Uh, it's not always rosy and peachy. You know, we don't. We do fight sometimes. You know, we yeah. do fight. You know a little bit and uh it's it's never too aggressive it does it never gets us violent you know we never lay hands on each other <laughs> oh my gosh i've never seen this you never seen that no. oh it's hilarious what is this is this real it's, or are they uh, playing it's they're you know, playing okay. yeah. verbal, <laughs> like, you know what? i call call her a bitch you know and she you know calls me a fucking cunt and stuff you know it's nothing too serious guys you know, you know? she called um, me one too don't so, feel bad uh, yeah you know, we, we've been through what you guys are going through you know and uh you know you're fighting and you know what you need guys is you need to is to uh be free and open up your relationship you know and, and shani and i are really keen to uh to to help you facilitate that you know so, no. you know, if you could see way clear, you know, send us a couple bucks. We could fly, fly out, out there, there to, oh, uh, no. you know, to where you're, 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 you live. And, uh, you know, we could hook it up, you know. Uh, so, if you could see way clear to do that, you know, uh, just a word of a word of ca caution, though, guys. Uh -huh. Shani does require, you know, uh a uh, a jumbo jet. She, you know, she she's more comfortable that a way. Jumbo she jet? Fit on the plane. It's more comfortable that a way. A blimp you fit on the plane. You know, guys. You know how it is. Okay then. Bye. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Lil's cow. What did we ever do to you? That was great though. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Are you yeah, ready? You ever want to hear him say that word again? Though. Oh my gosh. I know. Rev, I will pay you money to promise you will never say that word and never speak in that voice ever again. <laughs> ever. I'll send you um I'll also send you a link to that video so you can watch it sometime where he's doing where they're strangling each other and oh, stuff. Yeah, I wanna watch that. You've seen you've seen the um Revelina video, right? Where he dress where Rev's dressed as a woman. No. You haven't seen that either? No. Oh, I've got a lot of stuff to show you then. Oh my gosh. I'll have to well, send that to you too. Yeah. And we're that. gonna have to do like parts one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Oh gosh. It, there's <laughs> there's an endless amount of content when it comes to these two. Seriously. That's why like I stream pretty yeah. much every day. Yeah. And even when they aren't doing anything, like thank God for the archive channels because it's just there's so much and because i you know am fairly new to this and they've been doing this for like 10 years mm -hmm. um there is just there's a lot of stuff that i've been reviewing and covering that is still even new for me and i've seen a lot of it but there's still a lot that i haven't seen it's crazy how much well, stuff you, is out there did i cut the video off early i think Lil's cow was saying there's a song do you guys yeah. want to hear the rest of it? I'm sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah, it's a little, it's just a little song that he put together. Oh, yeah. No, that's fine. I'm I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut it off. All right. No, here we you're go. all good. You're good. Thank you. Yeah. Sick. Fucking twisted. Oh, my God. So gross. What? Yeah. Jesus. No. Yeah. Hugh, Sick. will you Fucking share or will somebody twisted. share Carrie's so channel too, please? Fucking twisted. Sick. Oh my god. God. 
fucking twisted. Yeah. Sick. That's fucking terrifying. Twisted. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucking terrifying. Twisted. Oh my god. God. What? What? Jesus. So gross. <laughs> God, no. What? What? No. Oh, no. no. Yeah, Jesus. no is right. No. <laughs> that's Revelina? Yeah. The one where he's in a dress? Oh, that's Revelina? Yeah. Sick. Oh, my God. God. Fucking twisted. So gross. Yeah. Sick. Fucking twisted. Yeah. Sick. <laughs> Fucking twisted. Yeah. Sick. Fucking twisted. Twisted. Sick. Oh my god. Oh, there god. it is again. Sick. Fucking twisted. Fucking twisted. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Yeah. Sick. Fucking twisted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you seen uh, Lowell's Cow Productions, like, any of his other stuff? I don't think so. I'm going to now, though. I'll have to. I'll send that to you, too. I've got to, I'll send you. I'm going to. You're going to get bombarded with a lot of stuff. <laughs> but. Oh, gosh. Well, how embarrassing. My little playlist of stuff I've been watching is up there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I'm like, all the music videos I've been watching. Um, yes. Please send that to me. Has Breezy seen the drive to pick up the boys? I can't recall. The drive to pick up the boy. Oh, when with Rev, when he's like high as a kite. Is that the one where they're driving and he thinks one of the boys kills the cat? No. Or is that something different? No, this one is him driving and he is going to pick the kids up from, or one of the kids up from school. And he is like driving like a maniac high. Out, he's, he seems to be high on something. Um, and yeah, it's pretty wild. I'll have to send that one to you too. If you yeah, to. we're gonna have to watch like go over a lot of stuff, you guys. I'm definitely interested in um watching more, learning more, and it's fun having you here, Carrie, because you know a lot. <laughs> I, <laughs> well, I want to know you. how did you get into watching Shani? Uh, well, it's kind of weird. Like, I just um I think the first place that I ever saw was on the um, Cecil McFly. A documentary i don't know if you've heard of that channel yeah. or so. and um so that was the first time and then i think i saw irate alex his documentary on her and i'm like okay who is this chick like i need to look into this more and um i came across some of the archive channels and then i found her actually when she um came back she was on because she had gotten kicked off of youtube before mm -hmm. and then she came back on another account and that's when uh i started watching her like directly watching her and commenting and talking and stuff back and forth but um it was you know mainly hate watching like i was like this chick is nuts but yeah. when um when rev got arrested that night of course she went and streamed and she was on there crying and everything and i mean i did feel bad for her like i i had sympathy for her because i thought like this is messed up like he hit her he kicked the kid he yeah. physically assaulted this kid and she of course was saying all this like she was not going to take him back and do she was going to do what's right for her kids and so for that two weeks when he was locked up we talked quite a bit like privately one-on-one -on -one. and um i really like she really did have me fooled like into thinking that she was you know gonna do what was best for yeah. those boys yeah. and um you know he the day that he gets out of jail i could already tell that that you know because she, she started streaming that morning and she she was already starting to kind of backtrack some of the stuff that she said and all of a sudden it was oh well it wasn't his fault it was the medication it was a mm -hmm. reaction from the medication and yeah and i'm like oh my god she's gonna take him back like i could yeah. just tell and um literally you know he shows up and like an hour later i get a text from her saying um hey i just got laid i what? couldn't yeah i couldn't help it he's so good in bed oh my gosh and i was just like literally you know her kids were crying about him coming back right yeah. and an hour later you know he's obviously shown up there and she's already like the first thing that they do is go in in the room and have sex when her kids are literally crying in the next room she's a horrible horrible person right when i saw that i was like 
evil. Oh, hell no. Yeah, I was done. I was like, I'm done with her. Like, she's, I can't be friends with somebody that would do something like that or support somebody that would do something like that. And then um, I only shared the DM of her saying that to me um, because she was, they were telling everybody he wasn't there, you know, because mm-hmm. they knew he wasn't supposed to be there. And um, even though the charges got dropped for what he did, which was basically partly her fault because she didn't show up to court or follow through with any of that the process you know what i mean mm-hmm. have the kid come come have the son come and give his side of things and all that she just dropped the ball there and they obviously didn't have enough you know on him to charge him with it anymore but regardless of all that cps was involved cps knew about it he they knew he kicked him in the head and they were like you let him back in and you literally you- kicked him in the head like yeah. that's not even an exact. Oh my gosh! No, he like, kicked him in kicking the head. in the chest or kicking in the like. I he said he said he kicked him in the head and the chest, so mm-hmm. he kicked him twice, and he's admitted this. They both have admitted this, and even said that they that the um child had bruising from it and oh, everything. God. And she didn't. She and she's not even the one that called the cops about it. Mm-hmm. The older son did. She didn't call the police when it happened, so she wasn't even going to call the cops about him kicking her kid in the head and then cps the next day after all that they had to come and make her take him to the emergency room because she didn't take him to the doctor or like that and they're like your kid got kicked in the head like you he needs to out and so they take them them take them to the emergency room checked out and um yeah she I mean, she just didn't care. Like it, none of the consequences that happened had anything to do with her. She would yeah. have been just fine to let it happen and not say a word. Wow. Yeah. It's just, I mean, learning more and talking more about it. Like I said, like I usually, I, I always usually root for families to be like reunited if there's a chance and if it's healthy, but like maybe the best thing is for yeah. them not to be reunited. I think it is. I think it is from the little amount of time that I was, involved or talking to her the stuff that i saw there were there were several things that just rubbed me the wrong way um one of them being that she got their homeschool grades in the mail and i was literally on the phone talking to her when when her son brought in the mail and the younger one who is autistic had failed his classes Mm -hmm. and she literally laughed about it and was like well, you're going to have to go to summer school. You're going to have to take more stuff and get a tutor and just kind of laughed it off. And I'm like, dude, that is like, that's not funny. You're homeschooling him. That's on you. It's your responsibility to make sure that he's doing what he needs to do on his online classes and everything. Um, But she just dropped the ball completely. And then there was another time that I was on the phone with her and CPS showed up at her house Mm -hmm. and they were literally banging on the door. I could hear them banging and she made the kids she she told them go in their rooms and be quiet and literally sat there in silence waiting until they left and i remember thinking like if if it was just all stuff that jason did it was just him why Mm -hmm. would she not let them in the house like if she didn't have anything to hide why would she react that way to that it was just weird like like, you obviously there's something going on that you're doing that you don't want them to know. And then there was another time where she was talking to the older son and they were go- talking about something, you know, cause she's, she's actually really good with him as mm-hmm. far as the communication, like kind of doting on him. It's the younger one that she, they, they, her and right. It's like, they, they have no patience for him mm-hmm. for whatever reason. And mm-hmm. so she was talking to the older son younger son came in and you could tell he just wanted to kind of like be involved in the conversation too and he was like i love you mom like just trying to get her attention kind of and i swear she she did not even say a word completely ignored that and just kept on talking to the other kid and i was like dude that's so messed up like i just i remember just feeling like i wanted to give him a hug or that's all he wanted was a little bit of attention too you could tell that's why he said it. He was trying to like you know, just get positive attention from her. Mm-hmm. And you know, there was other things too though. Like he came in and, and had to ask, he was like, you know, I would really like 
to have a pillow, like he didn't even ask for one, but just mm -hmm. like had to kind of beat around the bush to get to because he was afraid to like just straight up ask. It was just That's things like funny. that. Yeah. yeah. And that was only like I said, I only talked to her for two weeks. And so there were multiple of these things that I, I was seeing. And then, you know, the day that he got out when she did things that way that she did that day and, and immediately, you know, flip flopped everything she had told me. I mean, she's, I, there's recordings that she left for me on Instagram. I've played them on my channel. Um, where, oh, I want to watch though. I want to see that video. Yeah, because she straight up says like, what kind of mother would I be if I took him back? That, um, you know, she knows that he picked on him and like basically said that he, she's like telling, saying that he said that he didn't deserve anything mm -hmm. and that it had really messed with um, the boy's self-esteem because of that. And like, I mean, she, she, she knew she was completely uh, aware of all these different things and why that would, uh, is wrong and wouldn't right. be okay. And even after knowing all of that and saying all of that, she still just doop, turned around, took him right back. Like it was nothing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, Hugh asked, wait, they were friends. So you weren't friends with Shani, right? You were just trying to help her. Yeah. Like it, I would call it a friendship. Mm -hmm. I, I felt bad for her for, like I said, it was like two weeks long that, um, I had just been like following and watching her and kind of like hate watching her up until that point. And then when she went live that night crying about all of it and whatever, I did feel bad for her. I did feel sympathy yeah. for her. And so I was talking to her, um, you know, privately just saying, like, you can do this. You can, you know, make it without him. You're better off. Your kids deserve that. Your kids deserve to be in a safe environment. And she was, you know, saying that she knew that and that every that's you know she saw that and she could un she she was agreeing with all of it you know what I mean and then you know like I said for him to get out and she immediately takes him back like that I knew like okay she didn't mean any of that shit that she was saying to me and I mean I literally like I there we didn't even have a conversation about it nothing I just stopped talking to her from that moment on and mm -hmm. um you know and then when I released the dm of her saying that oh uh, you know just got laid or whatever that's when she went ape shit on me and was you know made several videos uh you know about me and trying mm -hmm. to bash me or whatever trying to spin it that way like like oh uh you know that I was just like somebody that used her and because she tries to say that I was like a troll like I trolled her right mm -hmm. but that really was not what it was like I would admit it if it was if yeah. I was just like you know completely from the get-go was just doing it to try to get information out of her don't get me wrong i was try i was getting information uh, yeah. every i was taking in everything that i was seeing and hearing but i i i was legitimately uh you know feeling sorry for her and having mm -hmm. sympathy for her so i i could lie and say that that wasn't the case and it was all just a game and I was just trolling her, but that's just, I mean, it's, it, I feel like, you know, it makes me look stupid because why did I ever, why would I have ever trusted anything she said or tried to be nice to her in the first place? But I just, I really did feel bad for her. That's just my genuine, you know, feelings. Like I feel like um, everybody makes mistakes Yeah, and it's, you know, taking responsibility, making changes, all that. That's what, I think speaks the most and what matters, you know, at the end yeah. of the day. And so the fact that once she took him back, I saw that she, that, that all that went out the window, mm -hmm. that it obviously wasn't just a mistake. I mean, this is an ongoing thing that she's choosing now. She's choosing this guy over her kids. And that's where I drew the line from there. I probably never should have like um, trusted her. I'm not saying that I trusted her, but I probably never should have tried to give her a chance in, yeah. at all. But that's just that. kind of the, yeah, yeah, that's just kind of the yeah. way that, that I am. Like, I do try to give people chances. Mm -hmm. And um, then once you burn me or once you uh, throw that chance away, then I'm done from that point on. But I yeah. will give people the benefit of the doubt, you know. Um, and that's basically what I did with her. So I think, like, don't feel stupid. I know you've said that, I think, like, a couple of times now. Don't feel stupid. Like, I think you 
I think as a mom and a mom in recovery and going mm-hmm. through certain things, I think that even if we don't like somebody, we still have like a bit of compassion. We still mm-hmm. feel for them. Yeah. Um, and then well, you try and help. And then if they slap you in the face and do all that, then you, you've tried. And then you right. wash your hands, you know, you mm-hmm. tried and you, maybe you planted a seed of recovery in her head somewhere, you know, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I, you know, that's what my hope was, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, thought, I thought maybe like sharing this around and change her, you know, life and do better. But yeah, unfortunately that was not going to happen. So <clears throat> it's a learn. It's just another lesson though. I mean, I'm more, I definitely am more careful um, going forward, but at the same time, I do know like just that's the way my personality is. Like I do try to give people chances, but mm-hmm. like I said, once you burn that bridge, then then it's done and I'm done with you. And that's the way it was with her. So that's pretty much how I am too. I give everybody a chance. Um, sometimes I give people two chances, but then, you know, mm-hmm. if you do me wrong and I, and I, I see who you are and I learn, I can't trust you right away. Then like anything's done, like any right. relationship, any talking, anything. Um, right. And that goes well, with anything in my life. That could be friends. Yeah. That could be, you know, that could even mm-hmm. be family. Like I give chances right. and if people, keep hurting me then like why am I staying around for that right well I think that it goes back to to just like with being in recovery as well that like you know have I ever like abused my kid no have I ever uh had my kid taken away or whatever no but like I have made mistakes like in my past like I have a past Mm -hmm. and um I don't want to be you know judged for that for the rest of my life I I I want to be judged for what I'm doing now. And, um, you know, even though I made mistakes, you know, I took responsibility for them and changed and turned my life around. And, um, so that's kind of, you know, that's where my mindset is with people where I'm like, you know, we've all said and done things that, uh, we aren't proud of, you know what I mean? Or at least I know I have. And, um, so that's the way I tried to, that's the way I try to treat, anybody and and not just her you know what I mean like it would be anybody that way like I I'm willing to give somebody the benefit of the doubt sometimes it does Mm -hmm. end up biting me in the ass and and in the end but I think that you know there's you there people like that people like us that do that there is a need for that you know what I mean yeah there's plenty of people that are the opposite and there's a need for that too, because there's people that need tough love and they don't need somebody like, you know, uh, really being like sympathetic to, to whatever they're doing. Mm -hmm. It just goes on. I think it's on, um, both ways. I don't think either one is wrong. You know what I mean? Because I think that they do need tough love too. Yeah. So, you know, I just, I'm on that side of things. I try to be, uh, cause Tough love is good, but it doesn't always, you know, it's just a, it's kind of, it's complicated. You know what I mean? Right. Um, Really fast, Augustine, I don't know who you are or who Holly is, but we're not talking about you or Holly. So I don't know what's going on with you, but um, I just wanted to address that because I've seen you say a couple of things and um, yeah. Holly. I don't I've know. never, I don't even know any Holly. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know who that is. I don't know. They said earlier too that like something about hurting their friend and like we're not talking about anything of that right now. Yeah, um, I'm not sure. I think they might be confused with I who think I am. so too. <laughs> Um, Angie's comment. It's funny, Angie, that you say that because I was just thinking about this with MFW. Hold on, I, I want to talk about that for just a second. Yeah. Do you watch MFW, Carrie? Um, I've, I've seen things here and there, but I don't watch her. Like, yeah. I, I want to get more into, um, her and some other people, but oh, we should do. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's a whole thing. So Angie said, recovering addicts, we love redemption, but there's a limit. So I was thinking about that because, um, me and Aaron, who's in the chat, we will chat and like watch MFW sometimes, not because we like MFW, not because we condone her actions because I, I personally don't like her, but I watch seriously now because I'm worried about her. Mm -hmm. I'm literally worried. Like every time I see her, she looks closer to where I was, where I've had a stroke. Yeah. I was drinking. I've had seizures. Really? You had a stroke from it? I've had a stroke. Yeah. From um, drinking alcohol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. While I was walking home from the liquor store. Oh wow! Yeah, it was a, it was a whole thing. That's like so scary. Yeah. it was horrible. It was horrible. Um, 
thank God you made it through it. You know, yeah. you could have died. Okay. I should have been dead about 20 different times. I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing because, like, I don't know how I'm still here, but I am. Right, right. I don't know, yeah. so I'm just happy to be here. But um, Yeah, definitely. So I was thinking with the MFW thing, like, I want so badly, like, for her, like, she's in the pizza hall right, like, right now. And I can say that because I've been there and I recognize, I don't know for a fact what she's going through, but I'm going to say in my experience when I was drinking like that and how I was drinking like that, um, like I couldn't go more than a few hours without alcohol um, or I would start like getting the shakes really bad. I would start like it was just bad, like the DTs because um, my body relied on alcohol. Then it got to the point I couldn't go 30 minutes. It was horrible. Mm -hmm. um, like MFW is doing so bad right now. And like I feel for her and like I would love I would love to hear tomorrow that like she's on her way to rehab and I would love yeah. to see a year from now her taking like anger management classes, classes. There has to be classes to figure out why people are racist, right? Like she needs classes for that. I'm yeah. sorry, she does. But, yeah. Like, I would love her to like be the success story that like helps change people's lives because she yeah. could do it. Right. But, but also at the same point, it's like how much more do we watch and do we take from her? Like, right. Right. So there We're is a line. Yeah. 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 So how much more are we supposed to just sit back and be like, oh, that's Katie? Like it's it's really bad, you guys. Yeah, and it's complicated. It's and it's just, I don't know. If anybody watches her and talks to her like on a personal level or is friends with her right now, like encourage her, like maybe to, I don't know, in, in a gentle way. Like if you care about her, you guys, like I'm saying as somebody who's been where she is right now, like it's not good and I'm worried about her and no, yeah. everybody should probably be too. Yeah. I had one of my um, best friends. Um, it's been two years ago now, but <clears throat> she basically drank herself to death. Like she start her, her body just like her organs and stuff just started shutting down. And she was in the ICU one time, like, we thought she was going to pass away mm -hmm. then so yeah. she got through it but she never would stop the drinking so she even though she needed a liver transplant because she wasn't willing to stop drinking she couldn't even get on the list yeah. to get one yeah. and it was just it was such a sad situation heartbreaking like but there was nothing that anyone could do like mm -hmm. we all we all tried but she didn't want it for herself and just yeah it's really hard to watch people that you care about going through that and such a helpless feeling because you really like you can't really do much but mm -hmm. be there for them you know and mm -hmm. and just be there as somebody to try to support them but they have to want it themselves too you know and alcohol is such a scary addiction because mm -hmm. like even I remember even points towards the end when like I wanted to quit but I just physically couldn't mm -hmm. um because a because I relied on it like I said towards the end it was like thir every 30 minutes like I needed to get a shot of something in me but um it's so scary because I re just remember thinking so many times like I just want to stop I just want to stop and then 30 minutes later when the shakes kick in mm -hmm. and you start feeling dizzy and like you can't breathe and the anxiety like oh no you like it's a whole thing yeah and you have to take that next drink so it's so scary and like detoxing from it you guys like it's so dangerous it's not mm -hmm. like it's not like just quitting weed or something you know what no, i mean no it, it can, can kill, you. kill you yeah well, that's why rev i mean he almost died when he quit drinking because um you know he quit cold turkey uh shani kind of talked him into it which i'm not really bashing her for talking him into getting uh sober but he should have done it under the care of a doctor because he literally uh they it's got it's got a technical name, but the way that they always talk brain? about it, yeah, it's wet yeah. brain. And um, I mean, it was bad. Like if you watch any of the stuff from back when when that was all going on, like he is just out of it. Like you would think he was on drugs or something, but it's actually you know him sober, but cut, recovering from you know um, the trauma that it caused like literal brain damage yeah when, when he stopped you can't just as even when people want to it's dangerous to just stop cold turkey like that you have to like definitely have to do it underneath the care of a uh professional a medical mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah so if anybody out there is in that kind of situation if you're thinking about quitting make sure you do it with when you are able to be on um 
a medication through a doctor um, because it's really, really dangerous. Mm -hmm. And you could end up, you know, you could end up really, really hurt or worse. So true. And there's no excuse. I want to say too, like, don't say like, cause I've heard the excuses. Like I can't go get help because this, I can't go get help because I can't afford or not afford, but I can't like, I can't take the time to leave. I can't do this. Like doctors, like I've detox at home on medication while checking in with a doctor. Like you can do, mm-hmm. you can detox yeah. at home. Yeah. I've done that before and it worked. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I didn't just stick with it. I went back out three days later. No, not even three. I think it was seven days later. It was yeah. seven days later after I was out of the Librium is when I went back out. Right. Week. Right. But you can detox at home. It does work. And yeah. honestly, like, don't be scared to tell your doctor. Like, no. don't be scared. Like, they've seen it all. They've heard it all. You're not the worst story that they've seen. Like, you're not the worst case that's come in. No. Um, no. And they don't no. want to see you in the ER having a seizure later. Like, they no. would just rather help you out now, you know? Yeah. Did you ever go into, like, inpatient treatment? or? Did oh, yeah. You just- yeah, okay. I've done it all. I've done um, inpatient, outpatient, sober living, um, whatever okay. is out there. I've done it. Yeah. <laughs> I've done it. I, w- yeah. I did inpatient um, mm. when I was 22. Um, but then I think I it was like I stayed sober, I think, for like 55 days afterwards. And then I started drinking again, too. And, um, you know, then when I got pregnant with my son, I quit drinking for the whole nine months, didn't drink. And then, but after I had him started drinking again, I wasn't as reckless with it because Mm -hmm. I had him and, you know, I knew I had to take care of him. So, but it was still, you know, too, it was still too much. It was still drinking every day, you know, Mm -hmm. every night or whatever. And, um, actually one of my, another good, really good friend of mine, my other best friend, um, she ended up in the psych ward because of spice. Do you know what spice Mm -hmm. is? Yeah. Yeah. She was smoking that stuff. And like, I mean, she just completely lost her mind and it wasn't even, it was like, even after she stopped smoking it, like it was days later, she was still like not right. But I uh, went and visited her in the psych ward Mm -hmm. and I just, whenever I left there, like it just hit me like really hard. Like I just started, crying I'm like I can't like because she was just like it's almost like seeing somebody that's like possessed or something because they're not their self and I just was like fuck that I don't want to drink I don't want to do this I don't want to do anything anymore because like look what it's doing to people that I care about and I just kind of like did it on a whim like just to see if I could I didn't even tell anybody I was going to do it or that I was trying to do it because I didn't want to be held accountable if I changed my mind you know what I mean like I just I just was like I'm just gonna see how long I can go and then like first it was a few days then it was Mm -hmm. a week then it was a month and from there I was just like I really like I don't know honestly it's kind of like a miracle because I just did not I didn't crave it I didn't want to touch it like I just wanted nothing to do with it and I've been sober ever since on, on alcohol. I did um, take, I was prescribed anti-anxiety medication for a while, um, mm-hmm. uh, benzodiazepine. And um, I got off that two years ago. And that was freaking hell to come off of as oh, well. But I'm glad I did now. But yeah, it took a long time to like feel normal again, like anxiety wise. Like I just got really, really like bad panic attacks all the time and. Um, I had just gotten used to, you know, depending on that substance, though, to deal with it. And yeah. it took the place of alcohol. You know what I mean? I can see that now mm-hmm. that I just rep- you know, put that in its place. So I have to be careful. I definitely have like an addictive personality. So even if it's like food or something like that, like I have to watch myself because it's just like, unfortunately, the way my brain works, you know, is I don't tend to do things health health healthily healthily yeah um, saying that right but um yeah I'm like that too like okay so I'm sober from alcohol you guys um it was five years September 10th um where was I going with this oh yeah but (laughs) sorry my brain just froze for a moment but um I can find like, you know how they talk about transfer addiction? Well, I didn't like get addicted to anything like majorly after that or anything. Um, There's like 
there's ways my addictive personality shows still where I very much see the addict in me. Like, for example, when I'm using Retin-A, I'll use that for example. I almost burn my face off every other month because I see that it's working. So I want to apply more. So yeah. more, more is always better to me. Or like shampoo. I really don't have that much hair and I really shouldn't use as much shampoo as I use or conditioner. Right. <laughs> so I go through that stuff like crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or I really like a face product or like some kind of skincare product at Ulta. So I need to go buy the whole line now, even though I'm probably not going to use most of it. Like yeah. my addictive personality shows and like I always want more is better to me, if that makes right. sense. Right. It's like the moderation is what's the see I had to I had to like kind of even when it came to streaming uh, right like because I kind of feel like I was when especially like in the beginning when I first started doing it, it was like I wanted to be doing it all the time all the time and like do it was kind of like to excess I mean I do still I stream every day and um, depending on what's going on sometimes it's are longer than others but yeah I have to uh, just be aware of of anything like that because I will see like uh, well I also suffer from OCD mm -hmm. and I think that partly kind of plays into the addiction and stuff too it's weird they kind of really? like go hand in hand almost you know uh -huh. because, so I have like there's I've struggled with um I don't know if you've ever heard of dermatillomania or <laughs> I don't it's think so. Compulsive skin picking is what oh, it is. It's kind yeah, of like, okay, yeah. kind of like trichotillomania, which is people that when they pu pull hair out, mm -hmm. um, but it's skin picking instead. And that, I, that was something I struggled with years ago as well. And I would go in the bathroom and be in the mirror, like just messing with my face. And it would feel like, you know, I had been in there for like 30 minutes and I would come out and I had been in there for like three hours. There's a name for that because I've messed up my skin once I start picking some. Well, I, I don't do that now, but like, especially as a teenager and in my 20s, mm -hmm. yeah. I had a thing where like I picked and I picked and I picked and I didn't care how much it would hurt or if it would scar or anything. Like I couldn't just not leave a scab or yeah. stop picking. And it was mostly when I was anxious or like upset about something. Yep. Mm -hmm. it's I didn't weird. know there was an actual name for it. Yeah, yeah. Bec and yeah. it's like, it's almost like um, when you're doing it, like you kind of almost go into a trance in a way. Yeah. Like like everything else kind of just like stops and you're just like, fo you know, super focused on what you're doing right there. So then you're not thinking about the fact that you feel anxious or that you're having a bad day <laughs> or whatever. It's like, it's just weird how your brain will find things like that or do things like that mm. to cope. It's a coping mechanism. Yeah. It's just not a healthy one. That's the thing that I've had to learn and to do the most is that like, you know, there, even, even if it's not drugs or, or alcohol or there's still any, any, if you're, there's still unhealthy ways to cope. And that's an example of one of them. So, um, uh, I have put things in its place. Like I love to color. Like it's some people might think that's juvenile or whatever, no. but, but it does the same. It does the same thing for me that mm -hmm. the picking used to do because when I'm coloring, I'm laser focused onto that. And so, and that's a healthy way to do it. It's not tearing up my skin and causing issues like that. So that's been a big thing. Um, as far as like for my recovery from th from the OCT type stuff or whatever, is just taking the the unhealthy ways that I was dealing with things and putting a health something healthy in its place. And mm -hmm. but you you know same thing like it could be exercise, but you can overdo exercise too. Yeah. Like everything, yeah, it's all about mm -hmm. uh, a balance and and moderation of it. So. Moderation, yeah, moderation is definitely key. Mm -hmm. um, Wicked Witch said, if you don't mind me asking, what made you guys turn to alcohol? I, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it was genetics because um, I do have people in my family that are alcoholics as well. Um, or if it was environmental, I think that it was probably a little bit of both. And I think that I always have suffered from a little like anxiety kind of and not knowing you know, when I was young, I didn't know what that was, you know what I mean? To even know that I was, cause I started, I don't know how old you were, but I started drinking when I was like about 14. Okay. And, um, looking back, you know, and it, it definitely used it as like, oh, okay, if I'm going to be going to a party or whatever, where you're kind of like anxious, you're around people and you might feel like 
I would use it to calm down or, yeah. or relax mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. And um, that's, it just kind of started from there and took off. And yeah, I think that it was partly that and then partly just it's what everybody else was doing at the time. Um, but, you know, I had friends that drank or whatever, but then, you know, they didn't take it to the extreme like I did. So I can see that, like, obviously, I don't know if you're born an alcoholic. I don't, you know, but I definitely think that um, you have a predisposition to it. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, so. I believe that as well. I'm not sure exactly what the trigger was or whatever, but that's for me I, the the best way I can explain it. Yeah. Um, I definitely can relate to like just feeling anxious and like it makes you feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I started drinking for a number of reasons. Like the main reason I can think of is in my little bratty head, like growing up, my family was so like cookie cutter, straight edge. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Not even cookie cutter. That's the wrong word. Um, straight edge, like always doing the right thing, very Christian household, no yeah. drinking, no drugs, no alcohol, smoking is gross. Yeah. Um, you can't watch Married with Children. You can't watch The Simpsons. It was just like a very oh, okay. strict household, if that makes sense. Yeah, you were sheltered. Yeah, very sheltered. So when I could and I was able, it was like, F you, I'm going all out. Right. <laughs> and boy, did I. I went to a strip club. I was drinking Goldschlager. I think that's what it was called because it had gold in it. Yeah. I, I went all out. So I started drinking when I was 21 like officially oh, okay um, but so the other were, reason it and... yeah it was late I wish it would to be honest like I don't know if this is going to sound stupid but like I'm going to say it anyways I almost get jealous when I hear people say that they started younger because I oh, wish yeah. I would have started younger because I think I would have got it out of my system <laughs> yeah that's what I was gonna I was just that's funny I was just gonna say that like in a lot of ways because like when I went into inpatient treatment I was only 22 but I had already been drinking for years and years at that point yeah. and looking back like I'm like you know I'm partly thankful that I did have it all happen when I was so young because, you know, um, it started really affecting my life in a negative way. And I started having uh, consequences because when I was 20, when I was 18, I had, is when I got my DUI. So I've had a DUI before. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was like, you know, from a young age, having these consequences from drinking and I think you know, looking back, I'm like, in a way, I'm glad because I, I've had friends that didn't start drinking like that when they were young, uh, whatever, they started later, not even at 21, even later than that, like, maybe they got divorced or something. And then they decided to kind of start, start going out to the bars again to meet people and they start drinking. Yeah. And then they they're going wild. It's like, I got all that wild stuff out when I was young, so that I kind of like learned my lesson from all that at a young age and don't you know, don't have to deal with it now at this age where, yeah. uh, you know, boy, do I really wish I would have got all that out of my system. Like uh, the Coke phase I went through, the cigarette phase I went mm -hmm. through. Yeah. I really yeah. think I would have just like rebelled as a teenager and then like kind of got my shit together at least by 21. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't, and that's, I, I, w I was never like, um, I never used cocaine or anything like that on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. But when I look back, I'm like, I don't know how I ever did it at all. Like, because I am so like high strung and yeah. anxious. Like I, it like, oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm you surprised I didn't just like completely wig out. I felt like Coke calmed me down. I don't know if it's my ADHD or what. So I think yeah. that's why I liked it. Mm -hmm. And then I had a weird like thing with like sticking things up my neck, like not sticking things up my nose. <laughs> I, liked, I liked the sensation of it, but like, right. I'll let you know, like the coming off of that is the yeah. worst feeling in the world. Somehow I was able to just like not ever want to touch that again. I remember I had been on like a three day Coke and alcohol binge mm -hmm. and um, my body started like, I don't know if that's like where tweaking comes from or what, like yeah. my body was spasming everywhere. I must've been like dehydrated AF too, but like yeah. my hands were doing these weird, like, I don't even know, like I can't twitching but like yeah. spasms like I couldn't control what they were doing wow um, I remember I called my mom like I had to tell her like she, my mom knew about my addiction and everything yeah. but I yeah. had to call her I'm like you need to take me somewhere now I'm like something's going on I thought I was dying like I literally yeah. thought I was dying 
Yeah. And um, I went to the, I think we went to like an urgent, I don't think it was an ER. I think we went to an urgent care. And at first I just told the doctor something stupid, like my nose was stuffed up and I was acting weird. Like it was something or like it was making me act weird. And then he literally looked at my nose and saw it like, and, like, oh, it was, yeah, yeah it was shit. Like there was no hiding it. And I'm like, okay, I've been doing this for three days. I feel awful. I can't breathe like out of my nose at all. I think my nose right. is broken somehow. Yeah. And uh, they gave me like IVs, I think a banana bag, like, I don't even know how many of them, but they gave me a lot of them, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. But then going back to um, the other reason why, what, did I have a point to that story? <laughs> <laughs> um, I start telling stories and then I, I, I do I, that too. I do that all the time. And like, I'll just mid sentence we or mid thought, about, I'm like, wait, what yeah. was I talking about? <laughs> We were talking worry, about that coke, and I was saying you were saying you never got into it, and I was saying yeah. I got into it. But yeah, it calmed yeah. me down. Yeah, you were. That's what you're saying is that <laughs> kind of had the opposite effect. And I've heard that before. Like if you do people who do have ADHD or whatever, it's the same way that like Adderall works. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like in someone like me that I don't have it. If I was to take Adderall or something, it would probably make me like really like spaz out and like uh. I don't know. Like, I'm very sensitive when it comes to, like, uh, body sensations. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Like, um, like if I feel my heart racing or whatever, like, it, like it'll just trigger, you know, a full-blown panic attack. Yeah. I'm like, oh, my God, am I having a heart attack or whatever. So, you know, me doing something like stuff like that, like, it would definitely, like, be a negative thing and would I would not like the feeling. But. I don't suffer from ADHD, you know what I mean? And for people that do, it does. It has that almost the opposite effect. It's so weird how it works, but that is how it works. It's crazy. Yeah, I'm supposed to take Adderall. I mean, my doctor, obviously, we know I'm not taking it and he knows. um, But I'm supposed to be taking it for my ADHD and I I can't because I got prescribed it. And I didn't abuse it or anything, but like I took it. And I knew I was taking like Adderall. So like my little brain got all excited. And then automatically my head was like, I wonder if you can snort this. I'm being very right. honest right now. That's yeah. where my head went. And I'm like, I wonder if you can snort this. And then I remember the next time I went to my doctor, I'm like, I can't be on this. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, I can't be on this. Yeah. So um, it's that's, a thing. That's similar kind of to how I felt when I was on the benzodiazepines. I didn't snort them, but definitely was like, oh, well you know, it, it, I feel so relaxed when I take one, then how is it's, I'm going to feel really, really yeah. relaxed if I take two. And it's just like, it, that's how it starts. And then it spirals from there and, you know, just gets out of control or at least for me, you know, mm-hmm. that's why I had to just get, get rid of doing, not do it at all. Because I knew if I did, if I was, if I was taking it, I was going to abuse it and it was just going to, keep on going from there and I'm like I'm not trying to go down that road again yeah no that's smart um everybody but it wasn't easy <laughs> it was definitely I definitely I don't know that um I necessarily had like severe like withdrawals it was more um just mentally I mean it was physical too but it was just like you become dependent on if you have this negative feeling, like you feel anxious taking something for it and Mm. you have to literally like, it's really hard for me. And I'm sure it's because I, I have have an addictive personality, but it's hard for me to just like sit and feel emotions, negative emotions or whatever, and sit with them and not do something to, you know what I mean? Try to mask it or whatever. It's like, sometimes you just feel uncomfortable and that's okay. Like, you know, you're not going to feel great all the time. Um, just because you're you're not feeling great or because you're feeling a little anxious doesn't you know you have to be I've have I've had to just learn to like sit with that a little bit yeah. and mm-hmm. and write it out so to say till it passes and it always does pass you know it just takes time but it does it does yeah um let's see the chat oh people are saying oh I've never tried cook but I want to no you do not no, let me tell you don't. no have you ever heard of like a successful like coke story no it always ends horribly something bad always happens no like it, like yeah. it was horrible for me like it's no. not don't it's even sneaky, play with that don't even play it's a sneaky slimy habit like yeah you it and will have you scheming really and it is and it will have you scheming and scamming selling your soul like no like it's not all fun and games like it's really not no, 
it's not worth it. Yeah, it's not. No. And you'll forever will be chasing. Like if you do it once, you'll forever yeah. be chasing that high and you'll never get that high back ever. Yeah. And it's so. very, it's one of those things. That's, it's very like short lasting. So you do it and you get that high, but then that high starts to wear off fairly quickly. And then 20 minutes chasing that. Yeah. And then you're just chasing that constantly. And like you said, you know, from you will never really get to the point that you were in the beginning, like you start to build a tolerance so quick. Uh, yeah, it's mm -hmm. I've seen it really like wreck a lot of people's lives. And, yeah. uh, you know, people will sell everything that they have. I mean, even their kids toys and stuff like people just it really makes people um, do things that they would never ever do if they weren't on yeah. on a drug like that. It's horrible. Yeah, Hunter said, I won't ever do it. I'm just saying I'd like it probably. And that's why you yeah, shouldn't do it. And exactly. it's, like said, it's fun until it's not and nothing good ever comes from it. Like, you will never hear of a good story. Like, maybe you'll have fun, like for 20 minutes, because that's all the high lasts. And then you'll forever be chasing that one mm -hmm. high that lasted yeah. 21 minutes. Mm hmm. So. Yeah, it'll turn on you. Even if, it, like you said, even if it's fun at first or whatever, the first, it, it will turn on you. It will eventually. Like, you don't want to, don't tempt it. Don't tempt yeah. it, you know? And Take it for people it. who have been through yeah. it and know <laughs> it's not worth it. <laughs> it's not. It's not. I've done a lot of stuff. Of I've done a lot of drugs. There's, like, very few that I haven't done. And not once has have I had, like, a happy ending to that story like right. it's always been horrible something awful happens um mm -hmm. it's not worth it it really isn't yep oh, phoenix said my friend destroyed her life because of coke all those things she wasn't hooked yeah mm -hmm. and, and it's crazy like it's such a seat like you can hide it like that's why people go in the bathrooms or do whatever like you can pretty much hide it for a while until you can't anymore yeah like, I remember towards the end of my little binge on it, um, it was full on, like, all over my nose. I remember I was at a club, came out of bathroom, and somebody was like, whoa, what were you yeah. doing in there? Because it was, like, all over my nose. Like, I had just ate, a, like, a powdered donut, you know? Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it tends to become obvious after that. Um, do you um, do you <clears throat> think that uh, Rev and Shani do, are on drugs like that? Because yeah. I often watch <clears throat> them. And some of the, just the way that they act, especially like Rev sometimes. And like, I just, I really do get the vibe that like they do some kind of like speed or something. I will say again, I don't know. So this is my disclaimer. I don't know what they do. I've never seen them do it. Uh, this is my, right. this is all sure. what I looked like and how I behaved when I did a certain drug that sounds like math. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm going to say about yeah. that because <laughs> um, I don't know anything for a fact, but um, I tried it. I think mm -hmm. I tried it th for three days. I tried it for three days before I had a child, you guys. So all the little Internet trolls who are going to clip this before I had a child. I've tried a lot of drugs. Like, yeah. I'm not trying to hide Me that. Too. Yeah. Yeah. So um, but I, I started looking a certain way. I started behaving a certain way. Mm -hmm. it, it, it sucks the life out of you fast, that drug. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what I really do think that there's something like that at play with them because it's just some of the, you know, like you said, like you, you it takes one to kind of know one, like mm -hmm. you can see the, um, the signs or whatever that are there. And just this, the, the amount of money that they go through all the time. Like, think about that. Like, I mean, they and when he had all that money, then I mean, how that's almost like why wouldn't they have tried it and did stuff because they had, you know, that neither one of them were working, so they yeah. didn't have to worry about getting a job, and they had all the money that they could want in the beginning. So partly, it's like where did all that money go? Well, mm -hmm. I, I think I think that you know partly. It, some of it went to drugs just in just like i i don't know if you've ever seen like he does this neck thing yes where he, yeah and i'm like to me that just because he doesn't do that all the time like when he got out of jail that first video he made that that after right after he got out he actually looked fairly like good and healthy and like wasn't doing that whatever by that night he put out another stream by that night he was already like doing that the next thing and just like it just he goes on these crazy rants too where he never like makes sense and it's just like 
just going from one random thought to another and never able to tie it all together and it's just really like you know it to me it's like you said there's no way to know uh, like we don't know what they do they may not be but just an observation to me it does seem like something like that is at play see i think too i remember the nights i was going out partying like i could buy what i wanted for like what 30 bucks like just enough to party with or whatever because coke is expensive but like Mm -hmm. my conspiracy theory with them is when they had a bunch of money they probably got the more expensive stuff which mm-hmm. would be coke, right? Yeah, um, meth. It, it money adds up, but it's a lot cheaper. So right. That's what I think, and I also think that they're the kind of people that will probably just do whatever they can afford that day. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Then they're done that. I get that too. And people, <laughs> yeah. I've heard some people say, well, they they can't, you know, be on stuff like that because Shani's size and she would be smaller. But that's not true. Like there, I've known actually quite a few people who were large and did drugs mm-hmm. all the time so it doesn't yeah. doesn't necessarily have that that same um you don't necessarily can you can't tell from that because you know some people she's still eating it and doing it like it's not um across the board like some people lose weight from it but it doesn't always happen that way yeah no i've definitely seen larger people at foodie beauty hello didn't she have a coke thing and yeah she, no, she didn't lose right. a ton of weight exactly like, she that's didn't and people example. were like so many people carry i remember saying like she can't be on coke because look at her size like it doesn't always work that way right it just doesn't no um teddy bear said check out the video on my community tab i believe they may be using the drug in the video okay um, okay Where? Let me see. is that see i'm on stream yard so i don't think i can't i was just... gonna say i don't know if i can let me see if i can click on can you share the screen if you can find it? I've never, I don't know. Let me Is that see possible? here. Hold on. I think I'll just send it to you. Okay, on Twitter? Yeah. Okay, thank you. And then, oh, wait, Teddy Bear also said, next time Rev makes a video, usually meth users, you can see the whites of their eyes above the pupils. Okay. I've never paid attention to that. I just always knew like it's kind of it's really obvious when people are on it. I've never really paid attention to that. Right. Good to know. Um, clenching teeth. Yeah. The thing he does with his neck though, like that. I was doing that on the on the three day coke binge though. So that's why I wonder if sometimes like if they have a little more, they get the. Go- I don't know. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Oh yeah. I think there's definitely something to that. Mm-hmm. Okay. I just sent you the link to um that video okay let me look for it on twitter thank you thanks so much you guys for being here and hanging out with yeah (laughs) while i'm looking because this is going to take me a minute because i'm not very fast with this stuff um does anybody have like any questions carrie like are you open to answering questions yeah oh yeah totally and then we could look at teddy bear's video and then we'll talk about the um community post that they did okay uh, that yeah. sounds good okay so i'm gonna mute myself just while i do this and i'm actually okay. gonna take a long sip of my dang coke zero yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay i will be right back in a minute <laughs> okay sounds good so do any of you guys have any quite oh thank you for the birthday wishes hunter i appreciate that yeah phoenix the neck thing is sus i agree I agree. Um, Teddy Bear, you said next time Rev makes a video, usually meth users, you can see the whites of their eyes above the pupils. Mm, good point. Clenching teeth until they fall out. Billy said, yeah, well, Shani doesn't have many of those left. So that that falls in line with that for sure. Um, let's see. <laughs> Nina, you said he's always snorting it. At his upper lip. <laughs> uh, Mermaid Love. Carrie, I have a question. Why are you so freaking awesome? Aw, you're so sweet, Mermaid Love. Thank you. I'm not really that awesome. <laughs> uh, why did the Mexican take anti-anxiety meds? Because he, because of his Hispanic attacks. <laughs> Daddy bear. <laughs> oh, thank you, Queen Cat Lady, for the birthday wishes. I appreciate that. Yeah, I turned the big 4-0. I don't feel like I'm 40, though. Oh, thank you, Dice Sam. 
this is your first live that you've been in? Nice. Yeah, I, uh, well, maybe we'll, like, start doing something kind of, like, on a regular basis at this time. Because I really st struggle with insomnia, so sometimes I'm just, like, up at this time regardless. Oh, thank you, Phoenix. Same. <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy. Yeah. Sometimes I sleep really, really well. Like I'll have like a week where I'll sleep great, and then like the next three weeks are just effed. I don't know. Yeah, I know. That's that's what that's isn't that weird how that works. Like sometimes <laughs> I'll be like that too, and then there's like other times where it just feels like I n I can't sleep ever. Mm -hmm. And even when I fall asleep, I'm like asleep for a few hours, and then I kind of am back up again. It's weird. Yeah, it's and I take I take a sleeping medication. That's the only medication I take is um. It's Seroquel. I take it for sleep because, like, I wouldn't sleep at all if I didn't I'm, take it. I'm on Seroquel too. Are you? Yeah, but I'm on, mm -hmm, oh my yeah. gosh! Does it make you eat sometimes? Yeah, Please. I've gained. Oh, I've gained God. weight. Yeah, I've gained quite a bit of weight <laughs> since I've been on it the, over the last year. Oh my gosh, that's a struggle. I take that medicine. I tell my doctor, and he's like, "We'll just go to sleep." And I'm like, "No, I take it, and then I want to go to the fridge. I have mm -hmm. to stop myself. Like sometimes I feel like I need to put a lock on it after I take my Seroquel because I want to eat. Like, yeah everything yeah but oh yeah works. but it works that's the thing it makes you hungry but it works great yeah I think and, and with the Seroquel like that's um another thing that like I'm I same thing like I take it at night to help sleep but it also um excuse me helps with um like dealing with the OCD like it yeah. helps to kind of like rein that in where I'm not quite so I don't know what the word for it is I can just since I've been, it took a while to kind of like build up in my system or whatever, but it, it, I think it has really helped a lot, like kind of, because it's not like psychosis, but like I would just, um, I don't know how, it's hard to explain, like not see things that weren't there, but I don't know, like just kind of be more paranoid about stuff. Oh, okay, yeah. Like, I don't know. Um, and it's like helped me kind of be more calm and not really yeah. like get into um that kind of mindset it's really hard to describe but it has helped a lot because I used to be on um like Prozac and that helped some but the Seroquel I feel like it and because the Prozac that's um an SSRI and the Seroquel is an antipsychotic yeah. so they're different you would always I always would thought well like I'm not I don't have schizophrenia like why would I be on an antipsychotic but it's not really like that it doesn't necessarily work like that and with the anxiety and stuff it can that like being really anxious can actually like kind of in a way if it's really bad it can almost be like psychosis yeah no it can be yeah so that it has helped a lot but yeah it definitely has i've gained weight since i've been on it so same it's it helps me though because like i it helps my depression and it helps me sleep like it, it yeah. treats two things at once with one medicine mm -hmm. um and I'm I've on that and then i take um uh, propranolol, which is like a beta blocker. It helps, um, my heart rate. Cause I, for some, like, I just have a naturally higher heart rate. Yeah. And, and then when I would have like, when the anxiety or panic attacks would start, like it would go really high, like dangerous high. Yeah. And so I got on that and it's helped a lot and that, and it kind of helps like, cause I used to be like kind of shaky, mm -hmm. if, like, hands kind of trembling and stuff a little bit and it's helped with that a lot like it just it helps like between that and the Seroquel it definitely has like made helps me be calmer and Good. yeah so stops from my heart from racing and which would trigger a panic attack so if it doesn't if that doesn't happen it's like it stops it from triggering it yeah I was on it for a short time and I remember it's because I was getting like anxiety where my heart would race and I would sweat really bad and I think it stops mm -hmm. you for it stops your yeah it helps like yeah. slow down your heart rate and it helps like sweating and all right that right it's I, technically for blood pressure but it has the no, same it. effect yeah on, on your heart rate you know what I mean it makes your heart rate go go uh slower so um, it's helped um, me because I used to have like there especially right when I was getting off the benzodiazepines um a couple of years ago and it was like I I was in the emergency room a lot because my heart rate would go up and then it would scare I would get scared and then that would just make it get even higher and they couldn't figure out like really why it was going that high I had I went to a cardiologist and everything and basically like there was nothing wrong with my heart nothing. did they check your thyroid yep they checked my thyroid that was nothing you know basically I'm 
I'm healthy. You know what I mean? Oh, like, wow. Yeah. It's so just it's something just, that you do. Your body Yeah. Does. It's just having, yeah, I just have a higher heart rate. So it's like between that stuff. And then the other thing is like, if I am feeling anxious, like if I get up, like I have an exercise bike, if I get on there and like, you, you know, get my, do something that makes my heart rate go up. Then when you stop exercising or whatever, it will naturally go down after that. So that helps sometimes too. If I, if I'm feeling like really anxious, I'm like, rather than, cause I used to just try to fight the feeling, you know what I mean? And just be like, you know, oh, that's the worst. That's and, the yeah, worst. and it just makes it right. It just makes it worse. Yeah. You have to kind of like, I don't know. I've between that. And then just like when it's really bad, sometimes I just lay down and just have to like kind of ride it out. Yeah. And um, just like lay down, breathe deep. And usually like about 15, 20 minutes later, it usually starts to subside at that point. So that's what works for me. That's good. So the exercise bike, I want to get one. Yeah. My my son son got it. My son wanted one. And so we got Mm -hmm. it for him and then he never uses it. So (laughs) it's basically mine now. Yeah. Being used, shoot. Right. That's awesome. I need to do it more, probably. Like <laughs> oh I said, God. I am gaining weight. I know. I'm I'm going up and down. Like I'm gaining four or five pounds, then I'm losing it again. Then I'm gaining it. I just want yeah. to stop yo-yoing. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I've been trying to trick myself. Like nobody come for me because I know this is horrible for my teeth. But like I've been trying, like, I love ice chips. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I've had like I don't even know, 855 surgeries, it seems like. And like I always loved being in the hospital eating ice. I didn't love being in the hospital, but like, you know, you <laughs> yeah. can't eat or like you can't, you're not supposed to eat. You can't. Right. Eat. Okay. So I, they used to let me eat ice chips and it was like such a comforting feeling to me. So yeah. at night I've been trying to trick myself. Right. <laughs> so when I take my Seroquel and I'm like, or in the morning, whenever I happen to take it and like, I want to eat, I'm like, okay, just have a few ice chips or like even suck on them or anything. I know it's horrible for my teeth. Luckily I have okay teeth. My teeth are okay. Yeah. But it, it helps me. I've been tricking myself or I've been doing like freeze dried fruit um, mm. cuz I want like something sweet for Yes, some that's what I was going to say. It's, something it's, sweet, it makes right? me crave sweet stuff. Yes. Yeah. So like at the 99 cent store or the dollar tree they have like freeze dried apples, freeze dried pears and I'll get those and like I'll have that. So I, that's me tricking myself. Yeah, yeah, no. I feel you. I I one of the reasons why I've gained weight is I am addicted to these I make these like coffee milkshake things mm-hmm. and um with it's got ice cream coffee creamer whipped cream like it's it's really fattening <laughs> and I'm I love those things like I can drink a couple good. of those a day so yeah that's definitely been packing the pounds on I'm like I have got to quit drinking those every day mm-hmm. because they they I mean it's insane the amount of um fat and like sugar and all that that's in them but that's what i'm that's what i'm what i crave with the yeah. with the seracol that's the kind of stuff that i find myself craving is the sweet stuff a wicked witch said please keep your blood sugar levels with seracol or please check or keep whatever your blood sugar levels with seracol no one told me how bad it plays in high rating really oh wow i didn't know that i didn't know that either i'll have to look into that oh nina you like the freeze-dried strawberries i like to put them in my yogurt or like um, a lemonade, I'll put them in there. It was so good. Mm, yeah, yeah it's dried fruit, and I don't think I have any in the house. I do have a very unhealthy snack, but I'm not gonna go get it. I have those Sam's Club chocolate muffins. Mm. They're so good. Yeah. Um, use honey instead. Ty Sam said. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, we were supposed to go to Twitter and watch Teddy. Teddy Bear, are you still here? <laughs> Did you yeah. on us? I'm sorry. <laughs> The Nightmare Ghostface Gamer said green tea helps. Oh, I love green tea. Yeah, I do too. I lost so much weight drinking green tea my first time in, I think it was my first rehab. I had packed on all this, like all 60 plus pounds of alcohol weight. Mm-hmm. And um, I went into rehab and I remember one of the girls, she, she had also been there for alcohol and she was like, oh, I detoxed myself a lot by drinking green tea and I drink it with every meal. Now, I'm not suggesting that to everybody because there's caffeine in it. But this is what we did in rehab. So this is yeah. what we did. Um, so I started drinking it with every meal, 
which was the three times a day. And I, I dropped weight. Like it wow. detoxed my skin. Like I felt like my hair was shiny. I felt like I, at that time I felt like I detoxed a lot faster from I alcohol. To, yeah. I need to look into that too. Cause the skin thing, like, um, I feel like my skin has been pretty bad lately. Green tea. And then also, um, I don't know. I use Curology right now. Like I'm really into Curology and, um, I don't know. We'll talk skincare later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I, I have the picking scars from when I used to pick the yeah, out of my skin. Yeah, me too. So like, mm -hmm. I found like using a bit of Retin-A and like even Curology has like helped me. But I will talk about yeah. that Yeah. Yeah. Not sponsored. Not sponsored. Okay. Um, <laughs> we, we're going to your video. I'm so sorry. We I start talking and then. I'm um, the same way. Yeah. Okay, let me share this screen because it doesn't help if I'm just watching it and you can't see it. I don't like green tea. Yeah, I don't know that I necessarily loved the taste at first either. Like, I think I wanted to automatically dump a bunch of sugar in it. I didn't, but I wanted to. So I think it's just like a taste you like learn to love. Yeah. Um, Just like these, I drink, um, oh my gosh, now I can't think of the name of the damn drops I put in my water. I want to call them chlorophyll. Is that what it's called? Not my chloroform, chlorophyll, chlorophyll. Chlorophyll, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I put those in my water um, almost every morning. And at first, when it helps your skin so much too, Carrie. Like, it, like it, make, it makes my skin shine. Um, nice. Yeah, when I'm drinking it regularly, like, you get, like, a little glow to it. And it's not, like, sweat or oil. It's just, like, a natural yeah. glow. But the drops, you can get them off, um, off like, Amazon for, like, eight, nine bucks. But um, oh, the nice. taste is absolutely terrible at first. It tastes like you're drinking... Like, I don't know, like old, stale, not moving creek water. I don't know how it's to oh, describe it. Yeah. Or like swamp water. Oh, if you were to imagine, that's what it tastes like. Uh -oh. But then by day three, I would say, like your body craves the taste. And then it tastes good to you. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't stuff like that so weird? Oh, wait. Teddy Bear said, by the way, Shani told me to go F myself when I requested $7.50 for my birthday stripper. Yeah, he told me that he what? sent he sent Shani a cash app request for my birthday stripper. Like for my, I, he told me it was for, for my birthday. Maybe it was actually for his birthday, but yeah, Maybe. He told me that. I'm like, oh my god, I'm sure Shani loved that. Oh my gosh, how funny! Oh, hi, different sage. And Hunter said breezy and Carrie stream is the best. Thank you. I'm having so uh, much fun. Yeah, me too. Me too. We've been needing to do this seriously, and we I have a lot in common. We you know? do. We really do. And I would love to do more. I know sometimes it could be hard to get together, but like, um, I definitely want to do more. Of yeah, these. definitely. All right. So this is gas station heroin is cunning, baffling, and powerful. Is this it, Teddy Bear? Is this the one that you're talking about, Teddy Bear? This was what you were in. Or did your, I click? I think this is it. This okay, is what there. was on the community tab. Yeah. Okay. So Teddy Bear, here we go. Okay. Everybody could see it. All right. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is calling on the FDA to do more about xylazine. It's the street drug known as Trank that has been popping up on streets all across America. Take a listen to what he had to say. Track down and. Hold on. I'm open to watching this if you guys want to. I thought you were saying that you saw Shani and Rev doing something. On I know. I thought that's what he said, too. Is this it, Teddy Bear? Okay. He says that's it. Okay. Um, this is he... what you think that they're on, I guess. Is that the way that... Let me see. Let me read. This may Most... be the secret drug that keeps Shani and Rev going and going like Energizer Bunny. So this is what he thinks that they're on, I guess. Okay. Well, I guess we could watch it. Why not? Gas station heroin. I mean, I guess they do. They buy their Delta 8 at the gas station. So True. I All can right. picture him buying this there, too, I guess. I can, too. In All practice. right. Um, I don't... Hopefully this won't... It's not going to trigger anybody. We've been talking about drugs and alcohol and everything else. We're good. On those <laughs> shipping yeah. it's triggered, it's okay to leave. Overseas or from other parts of the country to basically cut off the illegal supply. Yeah, Trank has been found cut into fentanyl and heroin, the drug meant for large mammals, not humans. It is extremely dangerous, causing the skin to rot away. If Jeez. gone untreated, it's used to result in amputation Hold on. and even death. I mean, what? Is that street drug called that alligator or crocodile or what is it called? I don't know. Crocodile? I've never Teddy heard bear. of it. 
Oh, it's awful. Like, it, okay, we could it keep makes watching your it. skin rot? Yes, chunks. If it's what I saw in rehab, they were showing us it, and I cannot get the pictures out of oh, my mind. Oh, God. Like, I've never heard of it. Plug your ears right now. I'm only going to, like, I'm not going to go into detail, but, like, it's oh, not. Oh, he said it's though. not. Talk yeah, he said it's Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, but okay. there's there's this one called crocodile we learned about in rehab where like your skin literally like melts off the boat like falls off. Oh my off. god, that's awful. Oh my gosh. So don't do drugs, you guys, and don't Please. try anything. Seriously, it's not worth it because everything's laced with something now. Anyways, like that's it's not true. worth it. Yeah, yeah. That's true. it's not worth it. The organization is investigating a so-called gas station heroin drug. You can find it on store shelves across the country, disguised as an herbal supplement that retails for roughly 30 bucks. There is a hidden ingredient in that supplement. 30 bucks! Addictive, similar wow, to that's opioids. what they keep asking for. Easier to get, though, bucks. prompting several states to ban it so far. More and more people reportedly getting hooked. We do want to bring in Dr. Patrick Marshalik uh, to talk more about the dangers of so-called gas station heroin. And doctor, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Doctor, what is the secret ingredient in gas station heroin and why is it legal? It acts like an opioid, long story short. So there's a market for opioids, as we know, whether it was opium, heroin, fast forward to prescription opioids, now fentanyl, gas station heroin, Trank, as you just mentioned. I think it speaks broadly to the addiction crisis that we're currently facing. Certainly. What is the secret ingredient called and how does it act on the body? Taptatine. It's a it's more like an antidepressant, but medications can have multiple effects on oh, multiple receptors. Have you guys so seen at this? End of the day, it's being I've utilized never heard primarily it. because Me of either. its impact uh, its opioid, opioid effects or impact upon the opioid, opioid system. Yeah, and users are saying, saying that the withdrawal uh, is very similar to that of opioids. And oh, wow. so many stories uh, that our News Nation correspondent, Dre Clark, was uncovering. Really um, striking, mind blowing. People talking about eventually spending $200 a day uh, just to keep up this habit. It is so addictive. What needs to be done? It is so concerning that in so many states, you can just drive up to any gas station and buy this from the counter. As I mentioned, I'd look, look at that more like a symptom of a, of a bigger problem, this addiction crisis that I think we're facing. Uh, whether we rewind, rewind to the 80s, hey, think about the cocaine epidemic and then the prescription opioid epidemic, fentanyl, this, amphetamines and so on, I think it speaks more towards what's happening broadly with, with addiction and substance use disorders and, and our need to, to learn more about these illnesses. Uh, key is that they're, they're treatable. treatable. Um, I, I want, want to talk, talk a little bit about trends with you because we've, we've been, been seeing incredibly just And now this is how nosy I am. I wanted to go sleep in, but now I want to go, like, I'm not obviously not going to buy it. I want to see if I see this stuff. Like, and yeah. it, I want to know. Yeah. This is wild. I, this is my first time hearing about it. Same. But then again, too, I just learned about something called like poppers or something that they sell at the gas station where you sniff it. I've heard of those before. Mm -hmm. Is that what it's called? I, and I'm like, I never would think to look for that. Like, I never in my head would think. And I'm I'm an addictive person. Like, I look for stuff to do. But I just would right. never think of this. That's wild. Yeah. Starting video of people that almost look like zombies. They are so out of it. And, and um, so, so many of our viewers Rev. looking at this video and, and really despairing uh, for the state of our country and, and just for the sheer suffering. And some people asking... You know, something like Trank causes the body to literally rot away. It is horrific to see. Wow. Amputations, people literally, literally losing fingers, toes, and knees <gasps> to this. Wow. Can, can you speak to how dire the addiction crisis is in our country if people would continue to use despite facing these sort of consequences? I, I think it speaks how powerful, powerful this um, is. Yes, a Phoenix, they are. A, a utilized called cunning, baffling, <gasps> powerful. That's, that's, that's what this illness is. No one that you see in these videos mm. sought out to kind of be on the streets, videotape like that. You know, the illness took them in that direction. Uh, and, and I think there's still a lot of stigma circulating surrounding this illness, where it's just thought to be more of a failing or a choice. And I think that this that does way more harm than good. What I'm seeing is the progression of an illness, just like other chronic illnesses, where where this, in many of these cases, unfortunately, they're, they're poor prognosis or terminal, some, some commonly used conditions. Um, you know, and, and as anyone progresses with respect to severity, broadly with substance use disorder, yeah, routes of administration such as intravenous drug use um, take oh place. And we were seeing complications that you just mentioned, amputations and so on, well before Trank hit the scene. Any provider could tell you that. 
All right, Dr. Patrick Marshalik, I appreciate your time. Thanks for being here. Welcome. Wow. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Okay. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact Well, thank you. I, I felt like she needed her moment to talk about the channel because we watched it. So. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to go watch it? I don't know. Wow, that's scary. That is wild. Yeah. That's the uh, people like it's heartbreaking seeing people like that. I've seen, I remember when Aaron Carter died, I started looking up videos. Like I didn't know a lot about huffing. Um, mm. I've never tried it. Like it was just never around me. So I never tried it. Like if it was around me, would I have tried it? I don't know. Um, there's yeah. certain things I didn't try just because it wasn't around me, you know, um, right. it wasn't what the people I was around do were doing. Um, but I started looking like into like, huffing and exactly like what that is and I started seeing videos of people just like out of it like that and yeah, it's, it's so scary. heartbreaking mm -hmm. you know I, I think I guess when we go through a certain addiction we think like our addiction can be the worst right like I know for me like I think alcohol it must be like the worst addiction just because of what it did to my life but like I look at huffing and I'm like the people seem like they're not even there anymore, like zombies almost. And it's, yeah. and there's a soul in there. There's somebody's, that's somebody's son, that's somebody's, you know, daughter, right. that's somebody's exactly. aunt, uncle, grandpa, whatever. It's like, and it's heartbreaking. And um, yeah, it really is. I wish there was more like, I don't know. I don't even know. Addiction is just so bad and it's so scary. And it is. It oh, really is. That yeah, was really I mean, eye opening. That, that yeah, actually scared I, me. I have not, I had not heard of that until then. Oh, so, Hunter Kratom. That's a whole thing. Oh, I've heard about Kratom. I've never done it or anything, but I've heard about it. I don't know that much about it other than it's sold at every single smoke shop around here. Like when I go get my stuff for vaping, it's, it's everywhere. There's like entire shelves for it. But the little bit I do know is because I used to watch Taylor and Nicole Dean, um, anybody else? And, uh, she, she's, I hope in recovery. She says she's in recovery. That's a whole other thing. Like one day we could talk about that. Cause I know a lot about Taylor and Uncle Dean, but okay. she ended up being sent to rehab and, uh, she couldn't believe she got kicked out for going to the smoke shop and buying Kratom, Kratom, which is supposed to be like, isn't it supposed to be like heroin, you guys? I could be wrong. Or like taking an I think it's supposed to be something that like, yeah, caught like something a, similar, a right? A depressant or whatever. Um, but I guess she was, you know, there's people there detoxing off of heroin and everything else trying to get clean. And she would take people's money, whatever they had, like, oh, I have $40. Can you get me whatever? And she would go buy them that and uh, bring it back to rehab. And Mm -mm. She got kicked out, and I remember to her telling the story and like no accountability whatsoever. Like, wow, you know, like, I didn't know it was addictive. Like, it sold at a smoke shop. I, I, like, I remember the what she said was so like, but it's true. Like, I guess how would you know? Yeah. <laughs> if, there, if now, now I'm saying, hold on. Now that I'm saying it, I blamed her. But hold on. Now that I'm I'm talking about it and saying it out loud, like. It's also sold at the smoke shop as like something that I I know for me they tried to sell it to me as like it would help with pain. Um, oh, okay. When they were telling me about it, like it's supposed to help with pain. So like I guess how would you know if they're saying it won't show up on a drug test? So how could it be a drug? Right. You no. Know? Like right. how does that work, you guys? Good question. Um, Teddy bear, that was a good watch. That was informative. Yeah. Um, thank you for that, Teddy bear. Inferno says it sets off the same receptors. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I know it's really, really addictive. Like, I know, like, the I know kratom really is, little about it. Kratom is really addictive? It's very addictive. Okay. And like I said, the smoke shop I go to, um, there's a whole Delta 8 section and there's a whole, I, am I saying it, is it Kratom? 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 Yeah, I think you're saying it right. Okay. There's a whole shelf of that and... They the whole thing and like if I didn't know it's absolutely horrible wow. for people with addictions to be doing it like I would you know and it's marketed as it helps with pain like maybe right. I would be, maybe I would have tried it you don't know yeah right. different stage it's so easy to get it's so right easy. that's the other yeah that's the other issue with it um nightmare please note that lemongrass benefits are prevents addictions of drugs and vapes prevents obesity Lowering blood sugar levels and diabetes, kills cold and flu, and prevents diseases. 
I know. I just like the taste of it. Whenever I go for my acai bowl, I get a lemongrass shot and my mouth tastes like I literally went to my lawn and just mowed it and then really? picked the grass and put it in my mouth. Yeah. But it's like the best taste at the same time. Like, I don't know. Your mouth feels like kind of fresh for the rest of the day and you have like a pep in your step. I don't know. Right. Lemongrass is amazing. I didn't know it had all those benefits. I just know like it's supposed to be good for you and I like the taste. So. Right. <laughs> Um, different sage said pot is as hard as my kids have used to thank God. We could talk about pot for a second. Okay. Um, do you guys know? Well, I think most of you, if you're, you've watched me for a while. I don't know if you know this Car Carrie too. I'm California sober. Um, do you know, do you guys know what that means? What's that? That you did that you smoke marijuana? Stuff? I do. Um, okay. am I getting, I do as well. yeah. Okay. So am I getting high out of my mind? Am I staying stuck to a couch? No. Um, I use it for like when my ADHD is absolutely horrible and I can't focus at all. Or if right. my I have a rod in my spine, if I'm having a really bad pain day yeah. and um, I don't want to take pain pills. Um, it helps with sleeping for me. Yes, it really, really does. Um, so um, am I mad that Shani and Rev smoke pot? That's a whole other thing, too. Yeah. On that. No, I don't care that they smoke pot. I care that they lie about it and I care that they use your money to smoke pot. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's the problem. <laughs> um, but back to California sober. Yeah. I think it means different things to different people, but for the most part, at least where I am in California, it typically means um, you're not drinking anymore. You're not injecting anything anymore. You are you THC smoke. friendly. Yeah. Um, and even that too, like, I, I think it should be legal everywhere. That's my opinion. Sorry. My yeah, opinion. I I've seen it help everybody. I've never seen anybody um, have a bad reaction. Yes. I've never seen anybody rob a bank or no. hurt somebody majorly when they were stoned. Like, right. You know no. I mean? No. Um, but I do think to like everything in moderation. Everything, yeah. I was going to say, I have to be kind of careful just because sometimes if I, if I would get too high, it can make me kind of have a panic attack. So I, I do it in definitely in moderation and mm -hmm. small amounts at a time. Yeah. Mine's like a hit or two, like a puff or two off my vape. Like I'm, I don't own a bong. Like I'm not doing bong yeah. rips. No hate if you do like go for right. it. Like, yeah. It's not the <laughs> but mine's do. like a vape. I'll take a puff or two and I'm good. So yeah. and to like, it doesn't affect my daily life. Like I'm a mom, I'm a daughter, I'm an auntie. I work. Um, I do yeah. a lot. I do a yeah. lot. So it's, it's not something that affects me. It's something that helps me. No, um, yeah. My baby daddy, he's clean and sober. It'll be 17 years in July. Oh, he, wow. Yeah. He, weed is not a part of his program, if that makes sense. That yeah. does not work for him. Right. Um, and he's very much into like, he doesn't so much go to meetings anymore, but like he could quote the big book and the NA book and everything. Okay, like he's yeah. very much into that, if that makes sense, where I yeah. couldn't quote anything. Me um, yeah. <laughs> Except for the serenity prayer. But yeah. um, anyway, so that's not a part of his journey, his his story, but he knows that I do it. And even him, like, I've talked to him. I'm like, does that bother you? Does that upset you? He's like, no. He's like, it genuinely, like, helps you. Yeah. Like, it helps you. If it was harming you or changing you, then right. I would be so against it. But, like, you know, so. Yeah. That's yeah. what you have to consider with everything. Is it harming you or helping you? Exactly. Oh, you know. Oh, wait. A upstanding citizen said, yes, weed has been a game changer for me. It's really helped my sleep, pain, and anxiety. It helps with so much stuff. And like for me, at least, I know um, I'd rather take a hit or two off my vape than take four different pain medications a day, ADHD yeah. medication, an anxiety pill, a sleep pill, an antidepressant. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, I'd rather Definitely. just... And it, and it works for me. Am I telling everybody to go out and get stoned? No. no I, I'm just sharing that it works for me. Personally, and, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and to, I think, I think, Carrie, I'd like to, to hear your opinion on this, too. I know once it came out that, like, I was California sober, I got so many people saying, like, you either are or you aren't. It's black and white. You're either clean, you're not. You're sober, you're not. And for me, it's no. not, like, black and white like that. No, I don't agree with that either. So you're like open to that too. Like, are you more of a harm reduction person rather than a, um, yeah, I yeah. think so. You yeah. Know? Um, I think that it's not like it, 
like people that say oh it's black and white and it's that clear cut it's not like it just isn't and what works for some people doesn't work for others you have to you know some people may not it might not be the right thing for them maybe they maybe it does you know maybe they can't do it in moderation or whatever you know it's like you have to see what what works um for you and um your you know mental health and things like that like it's just not a one size fits all yeah you know I, I think in general like if you're newly getting sober like you're gonna try different paths you're gonna try different meetings you're gonna try different things that work for you and that's okay like um I think AA helps a lot of people and NA helps a lot of people but I also don't think that's the only way to get sober and I think it's very I think that way of thinking like can scare people away from even trying to get clean and sober like you have to go to meetings you have to do this like you can and that helps a lot of people I know at certain parts of my journey I couldn't have done it without meetings um it's not part of my story now like I've found things that work for me but um just in general, I guess my message is to like, even if like you relapsed and you're back into recovery, if you're new in recovery, like try whatever, like try meetings, try that meeting at a church that you're scared to go to, like try try everything and see what works for you. Like, don't think that there's only one way. And, you know, I know for me, like I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't win in AA and I felt like I was always living up to everybody's expectations. And once I realized that like, who cares? Yeah. Like, who cares? Because, like, am I sleeping in bed with these people? Are they paying my bills? Like, am I going to marry them? Like, are they my kid? Like, wh- who cares? Right. Like, right. Once, I, once I stopped caring and, like, stopped worrying about the gossip and everything else or, like, trying to, like, because, okay, AA could be a whole reality show in itself. Yeah. <laughs> I should say that. Oh, yeah. But once oh, you yeah. stop caring, like, stop caring and stop living up to, like, people's expectations of you and like telling you if you relapse like you're a joke or you messed up like once you stop caring about that and you realize like this is my journey and my journey alone and like at the end of the day like I'm the only one walking this journey <laughs> like it's just me so like find what works for you right um I don't exactly. know exactly something, something I just told me to say that yeah I completely agree with that um, Maggie said, I want to try weed for my chronic pain, only did it in my teen years, and it made me so paranoid, so I'm scared now. Write a list of pros and cons and why you think you want to do it and why you think you shouldn't do it. That's kind of like my go-to with everything these days is like, <laughs> yeah, I weigh everything out. Like, okay, what are the reasons I want to do this? What's going to happen if I do it? Um, that kind of was like, I don't know. That's what I would do. Yeah. I don't want to promote it and tell you go do it. I don't want to, you know what I mean? I want you to decide if you want to do it. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. Makes, makes sense to me. Okay. So do you want to read? Okay. We can either watch, cause it's, oh my gosh, it's 2 a.m. So it's even later for you. Um, We can either start or watch like a 20 minute or like, a shorter Shani and Rev video, or we can go over their like community posts and stuff. What what would you like to do? I'm down for either if you, but if you want to go um over the community post and then um we can just plan on the next time. Um, oh yeah, we can go over some of the video stuff that we didn't go over this time. Okay, we could do Does that. that I definitely want to do this again. I hope I hope you. Yeah, do me too. I've had a really good time. I feel like such a little girl right now. Do you like me? Check your stream <laughs> out. Do you want to stream with me again? Right. <laughs> no, and yeah, I'm, definitely. I've had a great you. time. I'm so glad. I did too. It's it's nice to be able to, I don't know, talk to somebody. Like, we're not even in the same state, but like we can relate our stories the same. I feel like at least yeah. in my personal life, like I feel very different from everybody else in a lot of ways. And yeah. So it's kind of cool when you find people like even my mom, you know, like now you're becoming my in real life friend, but like, yeah, it's, it's cool to be able to connect with different people. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And I don't like, I'm a homebody. I don't really like get out and do that much. So like doing this and it, it, this is like my main form of like communicating with people and meeting people. So um, I'm like super thankful for it because if not, I would probably never 
like talk that you know what I mean like I just yeah. don't because I, I don't get out that much um right but I feel like you know besides the sobriety because we both stream too and we both do like we have a lot in common we so. do yeah um, always okay, cool. I was watching to fall asleep then you girls started talking to me I was worried you loved teddy bear I'm sorry it took so long <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Nightmare Ghostface Gamer said the people who are on drugs should go see a therapist or other professional people. Yeah, agreed. That's part of the plan. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I think when people are still using it, it's like not something you want to do. Um, but definitely, right. if you're thinking about getting clean and sober, or you are, like, definitely work with a therapist or a professional. Oh yeah, um, it can make a huge difference. Definitely. All right, you guys. Let me. Hold on. I had to find it. My brain is starting to not work. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. It's been like, I don't know, a weird, I don't know, past few weeks, month. Wait, why am I going to my channel? I don't want to read my community post. I already know what I'm <laughs> <I'm already laughs> that weird. You just automatically go to, you know, like, yes. my brain. I do that too. I do that a lot. Like, I don't know. I'm going to search for something or another channel and I'll just type mine in and I'm like, what the heck? Yeah. I already know what I've said. <laughs> okay, let me share this screen. Yeah, this is a freaking, oh my gosh, so ridiculous what she says. <laughs> like, she always is pretty ridiculous, but this was even like over the top for her. It's bad. It's, um, okay, can you guys see it? Yes, I can see it. Okay, so I guess what I'll do, I'm going to read it, and then do you want to, like, give your take on it? Sure. Okay, so this one is from six hours ago. It's already been six hours. Oh, my gosh. Okay, anyways. So um, <laughs> just to remind you guys, because I promised myself every time I talked about them, I would say this. This is the channel Shani for Christ is banavating on, the Losers Club. Yeah. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And it says, I looked at my face in the mirror. Seeing my eyes red swollen from tears. My womb longing for my babies. Mm. Yeah. Jeez, 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 jeez. Uh -huh. Like, who? that's so, such a weird thing to say. Especially since her children are teenagers. Wouldn't it be, like, my heart, my soul? Like, yeah. I long to hug them. Like, for me, it's I know, creepy. yeah, when my, when my daughter's with her dad or with family or whatever, like, I long to just, like, hold her sometimes. Like, it's yeah. never my womb. Like, that's, the way she worded it is almost creepy to me. And I feel it bad is. saying that, but it's creepy. It is. And, like, what, how must that make her, the kids feel? Like, if they read that, like, that, it's just, it's weird on a lot of different levels. And, um. And it's like she that's it's just her being over dramatic and she doesn't even realize like I don't think how like weird it makes it sound, you know? Yeah, I don't think I, she's so out of touch with reality. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, it gets better. She calls herself gaunt. Okay. Seeing, <laughs> seeing the weakness in my face. I'm gaunt and I look like I've seen horrors. I hate <laughs> looking at my face. I hate oh. seeing once a strong face into weakness and sickness. I'm mourning. I'm mourning people, places, things, actions, my strength, my sons. B.S. Right. Please. Oh, here we go. It gets more dramatic. Every day I die. Every day I'm alone. And nobody understands because nobody listens. When I'm gone someday, remember to love people. Never make them feel like me. Never make someone so alone like me. But she's not alone. What, she's not. <laughs> what, how does Rev feel when he sees this and like hears this? That's what I always wonder. Because she says stuff like this when she's not alone. Mm -hmm. She has him. And she obviously thinks he's pretty great since she chose him over her kids. So exactly. I, I don't get it. I do not get it. But yeah, she. I'm gaunt. No, you're not. No, you're not. No. Oh, my gosh, Phoenix. Thank you so much for the super chat. I hope you two do this again. It's fun and interesting. Yay. Yeah, thank we, you, Phoenix. Yeah, thank you. We will. And I think next time we're going to do it on your channel. Right, Carrie? Yeah, we'll do it over mine. Yeah, we could just alternate. Like, we'll do it yours, mine, whatever. Yeah, and, that's a good um, idea. 
I think that's a good way. I think I like yeah. that. Yeah. Thank you so much, Phoenix Flying, for the super chat. I got a super chat. I got a super chat. Phoenix sent me a super chat. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, what I was gonna say too, and like this is a hard reality she needs to hear. Like she wouldn't be alone if she didn't choose him over her kids, right? Mm -hmm. She'd have two kids with her, her family. Yeah. Um, so that's that's and have she's you so huh? Go ahead. What you oh, and she's just so manipulative. Every day I die. Yeah. Oh, all, yeah. Every day we all are. Hello, news flash. I hate exactly. to break it to you. She's so, <laughs> she's so over dramatic about stuff. Do you want an award for it, Shani? Like we all are. Welcome to the club. Apparently she does. <laughs> so have you seen um G Man's uh Wrap this or yes oh my gosh oh should my we watch gosh. it yeah i was gonna say maybe we should watch that's what we should end on or something because oh my god it was that i like don't get me wrong there's it's a little bit cringy but yeah. like i actually think he did a good job i was i was impressed by it i thought it was pretty funny i can't even lie like i don't know what i was expecting but like i was so impressed like i think i've listened to that at least like 10 times now yeah <laughs> Yeah, um, it's funny. Now, I will say I don't agree with like one comment. Well, there's I mean, there's a few things that are questionable, but like for the most part, it's funny. There's one thing I don't agree with the AIDS comment, but you know, yeah. in this tracks, they're not exactly meant to be like bunnies, flowers, sunshine, puppy, right. and roses. it's a diss track. So yeah, 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 but yeah so, I can see how that would that part's kind of eh. yeah. G Man does go hard. Like, I was impressed. I think, you know what? Like, move over, yo mama, and your little diss tracks. Like, G Man is coming through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can do more. Yeah. Inferno G Man wrapped. We're going to listen to it. We'll read a few more of these community posts just because yeah. they're so dramatic. Yeah. They and are. then um, before we go for tonight, again, we'll we'll do another stream on Carrie's channel, but um, we'll listen to the diss track. Yeah. Um, Teddy Bear. Oh, hi, Nightmare. How are you? Teddy Bear said, I thought it was going to be corny because he's a hardcore Christian, but then boom. No, he went hard. Like, he didn't hold back. Not even a little no, bit. No, he did not. He definitely did not hold back. <laughs> um. Okay, so let me go back. Oh, hold on. Chachi is wanting me to move. Well, Chachi, you have a whole bed, so. Aw. You are seven pounds. I'm a lot bigger. Like, you can fit. It's, it's a whole big bed. Yeah. She will move me of like if she had it her way, like I would just have one hand on the bed to pet her and she would have this whole thing to herself. Yeah. She steals my pillows, my blankets, like everything. This dog. No, um, I, I love you. <laughs> he sleeps right in between me and Michael at the top of the bed. Oh, like, really? By our heads. Yeah. It's like he's right there. But I love him. You know what I mean? Yeah. How many dogs do you have? Just one. Oh, just one. And what what kind of dog is it? He's a German Shepherd mix. He's a mutt. He I got him from the um, Humane Society. And, uh -huh. uh, yeah, so I don't know exactly what he is. I just know he's got German Shepherd in him. So he's a um, mixed breed. Yeah. So yeah. is he a big boy? He must be big. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. pretty big. He's pretty big. Um, let me see. Phoenix, yes. Isn't it funny how much space a tiny dog can take up? She, I'm telling you, it's a big bed, and I'm constantly on the edge. Like, my butt when I sleep sometimes, like, it must look so ridiculous, like, if somebody comes into the bedroom. I'm on the edge of a big bed. My butt's hanging off the side. <laughs> <laughs> my dog has both the pillows, the blankets, like. Yeah. They look ridiculous. All for this hog little tiny bed. dog. Yeah. <laughs> like, but I love her. And, like, it's wild to me that Hootie would, like do what she did with the cat oh, and like i'm over God. here falling off a bed for my dog <laughs> i know i can't believe she did that like i don't know how she does that i don't know either i will never understand that no. all right let's go back to um the drama the dramatic <laughs> yes <laughs> all right this one's even well i don't know if it's even more dramatic it's equally as dramatic yeah as they're all pretty they're all pretty much yeah um okay ever been so depressed you know your world is over Jeez. Nobody ever truly listens to you. They only cover and hide their neglect and abuse of you and then blame it on you. Oh, uh, right. No, right. you're the one neglecting and abusing people. Exactly. Um, she continues, what if I just stopped? I hate people's actions. I hate their excuses. And I hate their inability to truly care and understand. Oh, my gosh. You need a mirror. I know. But um, yeah, 
I feel alien in this world. Never understood, never heard, always alone. Well, for one thing, Shani, all we can do is hear you because your comments are off. Like you say how you're oh so alone and nobody to talk to. Your comments right? are off. Like exactly. Who if you're so alone, who do you think you're talking to? Like who do you think are reading these posts? Right. I don't get right. It. right. Yeah. And, and once then, again, what's and what is Rev then? He's just right. Nobody to you. I mean, he's there with you all the time. You're literally she's literally never alone. I think he's probably so beat down by her. Like, he knows he's nothing to her, so he doesn't even care anymore. Like, yeah. and that's sad. It's a, yeah, weird dynamic. That it they is. Have. Um, let's see. Oh, she's been crying for five days, you guys. Okay. I feel alien. Oh, yeah, we already read that part. Um, never feeling welcomed and always feeling left out. Well, Shani, two people who happen to be on this, uh, panel together have tried to reach out to you and help you and you shit on us yeah so um you got to be left out because you're just you're, you aren't you're really a horrible person like right why would we want you to sit at our table when you i mean you called me a c-u-n-t you were horrible mm -hmm. to carry mm -hmm. like like you're horrible to people who try to help you g-man g-man yeah i'm not like I, I don't know the whole story but i know enough he went way above and beyond more than i would have done to more than most, yeah more than most people and um you make videos talking crap about him like i know mm -hmm. he's helped your kids out a few times like how do you do that if somebody's he's helped, helped your, he's what he's, he's helped them out a lot. a lot that's why when they got evicted in colorado you know when they got the paper and saying they were evicted the first thing she was someone get me a hold of g-man you know that's who she you know immediately when something was up wanted to call that's mm -hmm. who keeps bailing that has bailed them out and like just because he had to stop you know paying for all that stuff and rein that in it's like now that everything that he did is like meaningless basically yeah. even though he did so much for so long she now it's just meaningless because he's not doing it still like it's ridiculous so if people aren't handing her money or bailing her out of situations you're not like you're useless to her so she could yeah. just treat you like crap yep pretty much um not shani oh wait let's see where do we i've been crying for five days straight and i can't stop you stop to write this community post right i'm hopeless and lost yeah mm. I got in a nothing. way in a yeah. way yeah i mean but it's self-imposed definitely like, is she completely hopeless if she decided tomorrow to go change her life, go to rehab, get help? I mean, is she hopeless or is she hopeless right now? I guess that would be the question. Right. Because um, any, I truly believe anybody could change. I think people just don't want to. Well, um, what do you think about the fact that she didn't go to that appointment for the mammogram? Because she knows she doesn't have cancer and she's going to be like, told she's fine and she doesn't right. want that news. For some reason, she wants to be told she has cancer. Yep. Yep, yep. That's just, I don't know. I could be completely wrong. No, I think that you're spot on. I really do. It, I, like, when I found that out, I'm like, okay. Like, she can't, there's no way. If she was really worried about that, there, she would not have missed that appointment. Right. She would have been there. I think, yeah, she just doesn't want to get good news for some reason. And that's mm -hmm. just wild to me. Um, and that's if there was ever another appointment or even an appointment in the first place. I don't know what to believe. They lie so much. That exactly. There's just like, which part of it is a lie and how much of it is a lie? And yeah. was there, you know, she conveniently got the appoint the call about the appointment when Rev was gone at the store. So he wasn't even there to hear what really might have went down. And what was said. So I don't know. Carrie. Different Sage um, just sent us $20 to my cash app. So do you have a cash app and, or, and I could send you half? Oh, you don't have to worry about that. But I want to. <laughs> no, 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 no. You keep that and then, you know, we'll figure it out later or something. But don't worry about it right now. Different Sage, that was really, really nice of you. Thank, thank you so you. much. Yeah, thank you so much, Different Sage maybe you know what i could do if you ever need a coffee or something like you're having a bad day i would be happy there we go to get you one <laughs> or send you one um that sounds good to me 
but yeah, or if you ever need anything, just let me know. And no, you're the, the, I, doing... I, the offer is there. I would love to split it with you because no, like, I get you. I get it. You're the one doing the work right now, though, and everything. So I feel like it's only fair that you get it. And um, yeah, no Wait, worries. Hunter said she had vape juice spilled on her. T what? Oh, I think that um, the she's got those marks on her breast that um, she claims are. Uh, cancer or, or part of this is, that she's worried about and really it's like they're just these two scars and the the theory is that she spilled like either vape or like dabbing or whatever can i tell you my horrible conspiracy theory that hopefully isn't true and probably isn't true what's that but it's a conspiracy it's it's something that happens has anybody ever put a hot pipe into their bra I haven't, but I haven't either. But I know people who have who are yeah. out there, and you put a hot pipe into your bra, it burns. burns you. Yeah, um, that's, that was my one conspiracy theory. I I luckily, a possible, possible. Yeah, if I had continued on my path, I probably would have done that. But luckily, yeah. that wasn't part of my story. Um, but either that, or I think she just like doesn't wash herself and clean herself. Maybe a yeast yeah. infection, maybe sores from mm -hmm. that. That's what I think. Or and. Or just like picking at your, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And I'm not, I'm not trying to judge her for that. I have done things like that before, right? So that's what it looks like to me. Is like maybe it didn't start as that, but maybe she like kept messing with it or something like that. Which you know people do. It's not that that um uncommon or whatever, right? But but of course you know she spins it into this huge thing. Mm hmm. And, um, yeah, I think deep down she knows that's not what that is. I think she knows exactly what it is. And she's just, you know, using it to manipulate yeah. her audience and to manipulate Rev. Because I think that I, I, I haven't been able to decide whether or not he is in on all of this or not. Like, I think that part of me is like, there's no way he couldn't know because he's there and yeah. but then at the same time that i'm i want you know wonder if she's not like manipulating him because his mom passed away from breast cancer and so of course the thought of her having it is gonna yeah. be rough for him you know what i mean and so yeah. is she just manipulating him and playing on that or does he know about all of it and he's just as you know uh guilty or um you know, as, as she is in all this complacent or whatever. Yeah. I don't know what I think either. I don't know. Part of it is I wonder if he's just, I don't know. Is he still drinking? Does anybody know that? I don't watch he, enough of him to say. He claims that he's not, but I've wondered that myself at points. And then like, I know it wasn't that long ago. She got a bottle of wine and drank it right there in front of him. Oh, and, gosh. Yeah. And then a couple of months before that, there was a uh, time that she got Jim Beam and she was drinking that and he wanted to taste it and she put some in, in the cap <gasps> and let him taste it. Oh, no, you cannot do that. And I'm like, dude, you're playing with fire doing that. So I don't know. I I wouldn't be surprised if he is drinking again. Well, because I was going to say, I remember at... <sighs> When things got really bad with me and I was drinking all like 24 seven practice. Well, yeah, 24 seven. Um, I don't want to say like I got dumb. I don't know how to explain it other than I was probably getting wet brain and like, I couldn't think like I felt like yeah. a vegetable, like a vegetable mm -hmm. almost T like chunks of time are missing. Yeah. Could be a year could have been six months, could have been three months. Like, and I just wonder if like, he's just so whatever, like he doesn't know, like he's not, I don't know. I don't know have if he's you been on it. Have know. you ever seen um, any of the videos and stuff of him when he is like wet brain like that? No, I've heard about it. I was always scared to watch. I don't know why, but like, Do I don't know how bad it is. Like, is it really, really like bad? Uh, no, here, I'll send it to you. It's a short little. Um, okay, we can watch that video. Um, they're dressed up as Harley Quinn and the Joker. Yeah. And this is a good example of like kind of how uh he was at that time here i'm sending it to you on twitter right now different stage um said i can't he, um, oh go ahead carrie he almost seems drunk in 
in it. It's weird. Okay, I'm going to Twitter. Hold on. We might have to come back to the community. <laughs> <laughs> Read it while it's up while you can, if you could see it. Hold on. I'm going to go to Twitter really fast. Um, oh, I'm still sharing. Am I off? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, there we go. I forgot what I was. Oh, yeah. Wait, before. There was a comment I was going to read. Oh, yeah. Different Sage. Um, I am a horrible, 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 horrible drunk. Me too. Um, yeah. Everybody who knows me in, like, real life and stuff like that, they're like, you're night and day. Like, please stay mm, sober. Cause yeah. I'm, yeah. Like, when I'm drunk, I make horrible decisions. Um. I mean, I'm angry. I cry a lot. I, Me too. That's what yeah. I was going to say. Yeah. I, I get angry or like cry. And yeah. Um, not fun. It's not. It's yeah. I'm a very bad, bad drunk. Um, and so like, God, I never want to drink again ever. Yeah. Ever. It's just life. And is so like, simple. God. Yeah. And having hangovers and stuff like I oh. look, look back at that. Oh my gosh. Like, I don't even know. Have I had really a hangover? Because I was never, there was no hangover. Like, there was no stopping. The party just always kept going. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I remember. Yeah. Well, maybe for my, oops. Oh, that's terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, you're about to see what I'm seeing. <laughs> yeah, this is a good one. It's not long, but it does really show, like, you'll see how different he was. Like, it's, yeah. Oh, no. Okay. Don't glitch on me. Okay. Hello. Happy Halloween, everyone. Oh, no, thank you. How are you doing today? I'm doing just fine, and I'm here with Mr. J. Tell everyone how you're doing, Mr. J. Oh, no. I'm doing just fine. Uh, hardly enjoying your head. Uh, just a fine evening yesterday, and uh, kind of wild, kind of crazy, right? No bones broken, right? Oh, um, but yeah, uh, good time, right? <gasps> I know, Mr. J, we just had a smash and talk. This is sick. He's yeah. not okay. Yeah. Just, what it is gets, she doing? Yeah. Propping him up like a prop. <laughs> like, oh he literally, like, either he, it seems like he doesn't, like, even know what planet he's on. You know what I mean? He sounds like me when I had my stroke. Like, that's terrifying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh my gosh, you guys. And I just want to show you what I'm wearing for Halloween today. Oh, let me just show you. Oh. Oh. Like that. Don't fall. Oh. 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 Be careful, baby. What is it, Mr. J? Are you doing okay, Mr. J? Oh, no. Mm. Mr. J. Oh. Hold on. I'm going to have a moment. I'm uh, going to have a moment. Do you know how much shit I get when people are like, why do you cover people who have addiction problems? Well, hello, I've been there, done that. Like, I feel like yeah. I never want to hear that again. Look at what she's doing to her fake husband. Like, yeah. this is not okay. This needs to be talked about. Like, this is disgusting. Yeah. yeah. Let me just show you what Like, I'm he can't consent to this. Oh, no. Oh, oh. everyone. Oh. Oh. oh, look at what I'm wearing. Unfortunately, oh. I can see. Is this a happy Halloween for Holly and to Mr. J? What do you think, everyone? I hate this. <laughs> I hate this. Oh my anyway, god. Anyway, I gotta go. Please do. I got some wicked things I have to do. I'm so sorry. Everyone. Oh, it's, there's more. But you know what? I, I wish you guys all a happy Halloween. And Mr. J, what do you have to tell everyone for today? Oh, this uh don't stay up too late. Oh. Early, uh, 
This is bad. It has to rise to rise at some point, right? Maybe, right? Oh, you want to have some rest with me, baby? Oh, yeah, right. That's what we're all going to say. Oh, Mr. Chase. I'd be freaking, I'm going to cuss really bad from it. I would be so fucking pissed off if one of these videos surfaced of, of me. Well, Hold on, in my addiction. Yeah. That's wrong. Yeah. There's no way he can say, like, he can't consent to that. He's not in no. his right mind. He can't say, hey, I want to be propped up and used like a doll or a right. toy. And that's the way that he was in that state. That's how he was when he had money. She was, you know, in control of his finances. And she kept him sick time. then. She kept him sick to be able to do whatever the F she wanted. Like that crap. But she just pulled right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's bad. And that, oh I mean, God. there's, and that's just one. There are like multiple like examples and times where he just like was so out of it that he, you can tell he just doesn't even know what planet he's on. There's also like um, another video, that, and this one's only 37 seconds long. I don't know. Uh -huh. Have you ever seen um, like what he looks like when they first got together? Because he I looks mean, like I can remember vaguely, but I don't know. I don't know. A different person here. You want to send it to me? I just sent it to you. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's sad because he actually looks like fairly normal. It's just crazy to think like that. This is what he was like then, and it's only been like three years. And look how far down like he has went. Like he does not look like the same person. No effing way. This isn't what I remembered at all. Yeah. He looks, like, pretty normal. Oh, you guys got to see this. What the heck? One day there's going to be a documentary, and this is so sad that I'm even saying this about what Shani's done to Rev. I just know it. Not yeah. saying he's innocent. Like, he's done a lot of shitty things, but I also don't know that he's in his right mind. I'm right. not sure what you mean. No. So I don't, I don't know how is. much of it is she's, like. I don't know. She's keeping him sick to be able to do whatever she's doing. I don't know. There's mm -hmm. something really wrong with this. Yeah. And I didn't realize how bad it was until we did this stream and we're covering yeah. this stuff. I yeah. knew it was bad. I didn't realize how dark and scary it is. Yeah, it is. It really is. Yeah. Waiting for the sunset. She's leached the life out of him. Look at him here. Doesn't nope. even look like the same person at all. Nope. You guys, okay, let's play and this. And this was video. from 2018. So, so five guys, years. I feel so bad. I haven't been saying who the videos are from, have I? Well, this oh, is for Shabby for Christ. Yeah, this is Shabby for Christ Archive. The last, the, the one from before this that we played is from there too. So, okay, awesome. Okay, thank you. I'm like, oh no, I should be shouting them out. I don't think I've been doing it. So, I'm sorry if I haven't. I'll drop, I can drop a link in the chat to it too. Thank you. Hold on, let me grab it for you. All right, you guys, we'll watch this. And then I definitely want to watch the G Man diss track with you guys. Yeah, <laughs> that um, will end with the price price here. Oh, it started. Oh, sorry, hold on. Let me replay it. Look at that. That's insane to me. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm yeah. 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 got, got a nice haircut. I got a beard did. He looks so handsome this way. I bet, oh, I bet no God. one's ever seen him like this before. Yeah. No. no. Oh. His hair so soft. Gosh, you look so good. Gosh, look at that. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Look how normal. Like he just looks yeah. like a different person. He so. does. He still has like a like oh, life in his face and his anyway. eyes and mm -hmm. color. Yep. Yep. That's what he looked like back then. And since being with her, he has went all the way downhill. Now, I mean, he's like a shell of that person. He's not even close. Yeah. But I mean, even like not that long into it just like when he was doing the when they were doing the harley quinn and uh joker thing like he mm -hmm. already had went and went downhill from that from there but yeah it's to see now to see him now compared to that like and he just yeah he does he looks like someone who's had all the life just like he's aged like 10 15 years in in a few he almost had like 
I don't know anything about him, but just that look, like almost still an innocence, almost there. Not mm -hmm. innocence, but you know. Yeah. What I mean? just look, oh yeah, he was innocent. I don't know. Oh, he was a virgin then. That's what it is. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's true. He lost his virginity to Shani. Yes, he's never slept with another girl. She was his first. I mean, I'm not saying my first was like the best or anything, but like, if you're going to have your first, would you really make it Shani for Christ? <laughs> Apparently. Shani. Apparently. Well, like they, you know, they started by talking on the phone and stuff and just doing things online. And then the, she just packed up her, she had a falling out with her parents where they, you know, she had to move out because she was you know, fighting with them and they were at each other's throats and stuff. And she just packed up her car with the boys, drove to Pennsylvania and showed up at his doorstep. Oh, you know what, Carrie, there's a good question for you. Cause okay. I don't know this. So was Rev a good person? Is she the bad influence? Um, it appears he was fairly good in the sense that like he had a pretty successful, I guess, um, chan YouTube channel. He was doing, he was a part of the, you know, really big into like the christian community and um prophecy community or whatever uh you want to call it but he was drinking before so he didn't you know he he definitely had an issue with alcohol before she came into the picture but other than that um you know he didn't seem to be uh he was just a very like sheltered guy you know what i mean yeah. he, he doesn't have any siblings both of his parents are gone his he, his dad passed away when he was real young mm -hmm. and then his mom passed away from breast cancer um in i think 2013 i think is when that happened um so he doesn't really have anyone in his life and um just didn't doesn't didn't hadn't ever really gotten out and seen much of the world and like what life has to offer and well, he was very sheltered and shani seemed like cool kind of like and exciting right. or in like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i don't know something shiny and different i guess right right and yeah. she and she was fully you know um capable of coming in and basically like taking the reins and i think that's kind of like what he was looking for because i i think that he in a way wanted to someone to replace what he lost with his mom mm -hmm. And I think that that's kind of the weird, one of the weird dynamics of their relationship is that he sees, her, you know, yeah, they're lovers and all that. But he also, it's like she's the mother in the relationship, if that makes sense. Yeah. She makes the choices. She's the one that's telling them what they're going to do and not do. And, you know, and uh, he just has to kind of fall in line. Right. and. I think that I don't I think he was drinking and stuff, but I don't think that he had been doing drugs and like getting into hardcore stuff like that. Um, yeah. That all came after her. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Lovely, Shani. Yeah. Um, let's see. Did we miss any questions? I love how Carrie said. Um, oh, someone asked how I rated my first. I mean, he was cute. <laughs> that was, but I don't think is anybody's first really good. I don't know. Um, that's about it. I love how Carrie said they were online doing stuff. Then she moved. That's the most polite way of putting that. <laughs> 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 online doing stuff. Then she moved. Um, Shani has always been a manipulative, horrible narcissist. I believe it. True. I believe it. Yeah. I mean, I remember watching the video of like her parents describing what it was like living oh, with her. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it just sounds like hell. It sounded like yeah. absolute hell. Yeah. I um, feel really bad for them. Now they're yeah. both, rest in peace, they've both passed away. Um, but yeah, she gave them all kinds of trouble and she talks horrible about them and really like just has always, you know, I, don't get me wrong. Were her parents perfect? I'm sure they weren't. Did they make mistakes? I'm sure they did. We yeah. all do. But the stories that she's told, and there are so many different um, things where like she hears someone tell something and, and, and tell their story and she'll take pieces of other people's stories and kind of twist it and then turn it into hers. Mm -hmm. It's really weird. Like it is weird. she's done that with, um, I know David and one of them, like she, his, his mom was abusive to him. He was a kid and growing up and everything. 
there was a situation where he she um yanked him so hard that she pulled his arm out of the socket or whatever oh my gosh well now shani has taken that story and made that her own except yeah. she, because apparently her mom was like a nurse or was in the medical field. So the way she tells it is when she was young, her mom would pop her purposely yank her arm and pop it out of socket and put it back in. Yeah. As oh like punishment or something. And that's just one instance. There's like just several things where Pete, you know, she never said anything like that. Then after she gets to know someone and hear some of their story, all of a sudden, then these new things come up and she's not now she's telling stories that sound very very similar to the ones that she's heard someone yeah. else tell. So I remember when I was watching um her parents one of the videos that they did. Um, I saw, I could see where she was kind of like taking little digs at Shani, and at the time, like I just saw that I'm like, okay, well she's not perfect. Like she's taking digs at Shani too. But then like you guys, I'm gonna share this because my mom would be fine with it. I did so much shit. Like I annoyed the hell out of my mom and my addiction. Put yeah, her through so much yeah. shit. She took digs at me all the time because it was the only way she felt like she could like, I don't know, yeah. get addiction back, get me back kind of. In right. Mm -hmm. And was it right? Some of the stuff she said, no, but I get it. Cause like I put that woman through hell and back. Right. So like she felt yeah. she needed to take her digs. That's fine. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Yeah. So I think my mom the same way. Oh, really? Yeah. I think it, it's a mom thing. So like thinking back, you know, yeah, her mom took digs, but at the same time, like we have to remember the stuff she said Shani put her through. Like that's her right yeah. to take petty digs if she wants to. Right. Right. <laughs> In my opinion. And she um, had to come out and like kind of almost defend herself with all the stuff that Shani was trying to say was going on that wasn't going on. You know what right. I mean? Because Shani had, you know, has always been putting all her business out online from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, she's said horrible things about her mom, you know, just like really horrible things. So the fact that her, do I agree with everything that her mom did and said and the way that she handled things? No, but I think, you know, she was going through a lot too dealing with it. And yeah. so her frustrations and things probably got the best of her at times she but i mean to me it's very telling that when both of her parents were literally on their deathbeds they did not want her they didn't contact her they did not want her around like mm -hmm. that's pretty you know that says a lot i think it does yeah definitely um Lil's cow said rev's mother never taught jason right because she always taught him that the world was coming to an end soon so he mm -hmm. hardly went to school really Mm. So he hardly went to school and she never instilled responsibility onto him. Yeah, I believe that. And that's yeah. you know why he partly why he is the way he is today. Mm -hmm. Wow, that makes so much sense. Um mm -hmm. let's see. Hunter said instead of Shani needs love, it should be Shani needs a job. Oh my gosh. And Shani yes. needs a shower. Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. All right, you guys, let's watch this music video. Hold on. So again, um, like it's not, it's a diss track, you know, this isn't singing about how wonderful Shani and Rev are. It's a diss track. It's the number one oh, hold on. No, don't go yet. I'm not ready. <laughs> don't go. Um, okay. Let's see. Share screen. You got this, Breezy. You can do this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm so not tech savvy. I'm not. Oh, like, I feel you. I'm the same way. I am horrible at it. All right, you guys. Here we go. I'm so excited. I liked this. I. Me too. Me the, e it's awesome, right? Revelation news. I want to be the best e beggar possible. So, why do I make racist jokes? Well, I'm gonna be honest. Because I can. Yo, 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 Never show your money to that five cent oh yeah. you nasty and trashy. You look <laughs> you say the whole power looking power quarter. Shit you got cancer, that's a bold face lot. You bring the PA 
laws, making money off lies. Shit, he's been dying for the last 10 years. Ain't nobody falling for those crocodile tears. Shit, you're a con, a six foot book. Rim kicker out, I'll buy you some cookies. Please, <laughs> please, please, go find the job and stop begging for a week. Yes. I love it. I love it. Right, Melissa? It hit. It's good. You know, your old friend did shut your mouth. I don't kiss butt because you gave me a house. You beg for money just to get laid. Stop sleeping with Shanny. Before you get AIDS, Rev is a joke who's addicted to dope. You rather buy drugs than buy shiny soap. The buy shiny soap is that. Love God, you lazy little boy who won't get a job. This is for Zach, Revelation News. Did you like jail? Cause you're going back soon. We're supporting a scam done by your hut who sold her body like a cheap slut. Oh. I don't look nice, but I do it sad. We all know you ate that nasty, bad, nasty. She used you, Rev. And now you're broke. Now she begs she man to buy her smokes. Oh, dang. <laughs> Talking about my wife. Oh my gosh. Just remember, I own you now. I know. Oh, hey, G Man, what's There's up? Oh, oh gosh. You know, I've been waiting for you. But anyway, um. Oh my that, gosh. That was right. Revelina. Wow. I don't think I watched, like, I watched the song, but I don't think I saw the very end part. You guys, I want to put on a mug somewhere. Like, I'm going to get me a coffee mug that says, never give your money to a five cent hoe. I think that was my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite <laughs> yeah, he had, he definitely had some uh, zingers in there. He did. He but did. again, I do. I think that he did pretty good. It was funny. The, like, I love the part it. about buying cookies and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Merch, right, Melissa? Yeah, I'm gonna take some of G Man's lines. I loved it, not really, but like it was. I yeah. liked the district. I thought it was yeah. good. I didn't expect that. I was impressed. Um, Me too. Me too. Yeah. All right, you guys. Well, Carrie, I would love to do this again. Yeah, um, we'll we do it on definitely, your channel. Definitely do it. Like you said, well, we can alternate and do it on mine. You know, one one time, then the next time we'll do it on yours and do yeah. it like that. I had a really good time. Thank you guys all for hanging out with us tonight or this morning. <laughs> it's still technically to me. To me, it's still last night until I go to sleep and wake up. If that right, makes yes. So it's not it the morning sense. until I wake up. <laughs> That's the, I feel you. I feel you. I agree. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out the chat. Like I know I haven't been able to respond to everybody, but I have been watching, and like you guys are amazing. You guys are hilarious, and yeah. Um, they it's are. been a blast. All right, I am gonna go to sleep. Like I, it's beyond I time. Feel you. Yeah, <laughs> I feel you. We'll I'm see tired. you guys soon. You guys, please go subscribe to Carrie's channel. Um, and also Lowell's cow G Man. I think Carrie, you shared G Man's, right? I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, if I missed anybody, did I miss anybody? I don't don't subscribe so. to Shani. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and subscribe to everyone but you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But you guys, um, have a great day, great evening, wherever you are. And I am off to bed. See you guys so Bye. soon. Bye, Bye everybody. everybody. See you later. Bye.